Welcome to Rocky Top, home sweet home to Tennessee, and one of the great traditions in all of college football, the pride of the Southland marching band, 300 strong. Celebrating 75 years of football in the SEC, it is 12th ranked Georgia and Tennessee, the Home Depot SEC on CBS. And all oh, this game will impact the Eastern Conference. South Carolina on top beat Kentucky on Thursday night. You'll see Florida LSU tonight on CBS. Yes, Georgia is in the hunt. Tennessee so desperate to score their first conference win today and silence the critics here in Knoxville. And hi everyone, Craig Bowlerjack, Steve Berline. So glad you're with us today. Georgia rolls in three straight victories. And how about their quarterback, Matthew Stafford? Steve, he's growing leaps and bounds game by game. Oh, he really has, Craig. And, and he, he told us his number one priority this year going into the season, his sophomore year, was to improve his game management skills. And he's done that, boy. He's made big plays right there in the Alabama game to win the game. His turnovers are down. He's done a super job leading this team. But if you want to shut down the Georgia Bulldogs, those two guys right there are the key. No Sean Marino, Thomas Brown, two very physical backs. And last week, over 239 yards after the first contact against Ole Miss. You got to stop those two guys if you want to stop the Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, it's a key today. Now, we talk about Tennessee. They've always been known for their fly around, get after it type of defense. They're young, they get after it, but that youth is hurt. They've given up too many big plays. W way too many big plays. And you can see the numbers speak for themselves. 23 big plays in their four in their four games this year. That's way too many plays of over 20 yards. And Coach Philip Fulmer told us he's put a lot of pressure on what has become his defense's best friend, their biggest ally, starting quarterback Eric Ains. This guy has really kept Tennessee in every ball game. He's put up huge numbers. He's getting better and better. And the senior has really established himself as one of the top quarterbacks in the country by his performance. And I'll tell you what, Craig, he is one guy that will not let this team get out of a ball game they're always in it with Eric Ainge at quarterback Neyland Stadium 103,000 strong all dressed in orange to watch this one today and on the first Saturday in October how about high 80s humid and hot this is the 37th meeting between Georgia and Tennessee the Bulldogs have won three straight here in Knoxville Tennessee winning last year in Athens 51 33 experience SEC college football on CBS brought to you in high definition by Sony. What a day. What a day in Knoxville. The head coach of the, of the Georgia Bulldogs in his seventh season, Mark Rick. He's the king of the road, 23 and 3 during his tenure with Georgia. And Philip Fulmer in his 16th season. Pressure here in Knoxville to get this team back on track. He's been associated with this university as a player, assistant coach, head coach for 35 years. Tennessee rolls in two and two and Steve as we mentioned looking for their first SEC conference win of the season Georgia four and one two and one in conference play and there's about a hundred and three thousand people here too Craig that are desperate every bit as desperate as this football team is for a good showing and a win 
Georgia will receive. Thomas Brown back to receive the kick of Colquitt. And a good kick, penalty back one yard deep, lost the handle, and let's take a knee. Smart. Let's take a look now at Applebee's starting lineups. And for Georgia, the quarterback, Matthew Stafford, he's a 6'3 sophomore, 10-3 and three as a starter. Up front, you're going to find two freshmen protecting Stafford. The left tackle, Trenton Sturdivant, and the right guard, Clint Bowling. And hey, it's a physical ground game led by Thomas Brown. The offensive coordinator, Mike Bobo. <laughs> Noise will be deafening. As Georgia starts this drive at the 20 yard line, 12th ranked in the country. Up the middle, Brown, averaging 5.6 yards a carry, picks up maybe two to the 22 yard line. And let's set that defense for Tennessee. Two seniors protecting the end, Xavier Mitchell and Antonio Reynolds, the linebackers. You know, it's all about speed, led by the middle linebacker, Gerard Mayo, and freshman Eric Berry starts at strong safety. John Chavis, the Tennessee defensive coordinator, this is a game he told us of passion. He wants to be, bring respect back to this get-after-it defense. Play action, Stafford to pump. Sidesteps trouble, throws a deep ball near sideline. Man coverage and out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And Steve Verline, let's go above the line. Well, when, when Georgia has the ball, it's all about a balanced offense. It's a balancing act for them. They've got to be able to run the ball and then do their play action to get into the flow of their game. If they don't have balance, they don't have much. For Tennessee, you've already heard the crowd. you got to stir the pot. Give them a lot of reasons to get excited, get this crowd into it, and make it. Make it very difficult for Matthew Stafford to function in this offense. Big third down at eight here early. Opening drive, first quarter in Knoxville. Stafford missing on his first throw. Walks up to the line, and it is loud. Three wide receivers, two set to the far side. Stafford sets up in that pocket again. Goes up top and coverage and incomplete. 0 for 2 start for Stafford and the intended receiver, Tony Wilson. You know what that last play right there showed me, though, Craig? It showed me that Matthew Stafford is on top of his game. His two throws, maybe they weren't the best throws, but he saw something in that Tennessee defense that told him it was man-to-man -man coverage, and he wanted to take a shot, overthrew it a little bit, but he saw the matchup and went to the right spot. He'll settle down as this game goes along. Well, three up, three down for Georgia. Brian Mims in to set the, uh, the punt, averaging 42 yards a kick, and Jonathan Hefney. Is in to return, standing at his own 35-yard line. Good snap, good kick, end over end. Takes a Georgia bounce, and it's still on a roll inside the 20, 19-yard line. Oh, what a punt of 59 yards. Let's set the Tennessee offense. Of course, the quarterback, he's 6'6". Eric Ainge leads the SEC in passing with 282 a ball game. O-line has allowed only two sacks, Steve. Led by the senior left tackle, Eric Young. Plenty of offensive weapons for Ainge, including the tight end. Chris Brown leads the team in touchdowns with four. David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator. His second go around after the head coach of Ole Miss comes back to Tennessee. Both teams trying to start this game, establishing the run and four yards for Arian Foster. Dewberry the tackle. And let's set that Georgia defense. Marcus Howard provides great speed on the end. How about a 4 4 40? Ellerby, the middle backer, leads the team and tackles with 35. And the secondary, two sophomores on the corners, Prince Miller and Asher Allen. And the D coordinator, Willie Martinez. And Martinez and Georgia looking at a Tennessee second down and six. There's Ainge, three step drop, slingshots at far side. It's caught. And about two yards shy of the first down is Brown. And Steve, what do you say? Let's go back above the line. Let's go above the line, Craig. For Tennessee on offense, I believe you've got to run to win. Arian Foster averaging over five yards a carry, but they've been behind. They haven't been able to rely on that running game. They've got to get it going. For Georgia, on the other side of the, the extreme, you've got to freeze Foster, the Foster freeze. You cannot let their running game get going. 
Got to put the pressure on Eric Ames to make all the plays for this Tennessee offense. Foster good for five yards to carry the pitch out. Stiff arm, first down and more, and out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. So Foster, the junior from San Diego, gives Tennessee a first down. Marcus Howard with the tackle. Good timing on this call. You're going to see all the actions going to the Tennessee left, but Foster takes a little jab step left, goes right, caught Georgia being a little bit over-aggressive in their pursuit. It's a play that every team has in their playbook, but it worked to perfection right there for the Tennessee Volunteers. First down at the 36-yard line. The lone back is Foster. Ainge, handoff, coming near side, off the left tackle. Nice little move. Can he turn the corner to the 46-yard line? Dewberry chases down Arian Foster and near a first down at the 46. In fact, they're going to move the chains. Good, solid counter play. You can see... The right guard, Chris Scott, pulling around the left side, leading Arian Foster. Good job by the left side of the Tennessee offensive line. Eric Young and Anthony Parker caving down the Georgia Bulldogs inside and, and giving Arian Foster a lane to the outside for a big pickup. A pickup of 11 at the 47-yard line. Ainge in trouble again, throws it out to the flat, a high floater, it's caught by Foster. And again, near a first down inside Georgia territory. And Brandon Miller, the strong side linebacker, chased down Foster. So far, Foster, Foster, and Foster. And more Foster, that's right. We're, they're not freezing Foster at this point. Eric Ainge doing a great job, dropping back in that pocket. He was looking up the field for the big play, realized, the senior realized the big play wasn't there up the field, knew right where his check down was, a good positive play again. Three straight plays to Foster, gets a break, and LaMarcus Coker. A sophomore from Antioch, Tennessee, checks into the backfield. He'll get the carry up the middle, pops out, still on his feet. Oh, terrific effort to the 40. What was a two-yard loss turns out to be a two-yard gain. Well, that might have been one of the best two-yard runs we've seen this year, Craig. That was a heck of a job by the Georgia defense on the inside. Penetration in the backfield. You can see a lot of red, red and white color right there. Led by Jerry's win number 99, but Coker, who rushed for over 100 yards last week, showed he is not going to go down easily. Does a great job picking up positive yards. And the seventh play of this drive. And again, good push by Coker. Leans in and a host of red-helmeted Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, I'm impressed, Greg, by... Uh by the, the job that the Tennessee offensive line is doing, controlling that line of scrimmage for the most part. They're getting some good push against a real good physical Georgia defense. They only give up about 119 yards a game rushing, but Tennessee is making it look pretty easy right now. Third down and four as we creep up on 11 minutes left opening quarter. Little jump. And now late flags come down. Ainge fires and traffic complete at the 30-yard line. But flags are down back around the 34. Lucas Taylor right on the numbers makes the grab. I saw Roderick battle the near side defensive end with a little bit of quick of a giddy up. Thomas Ritter, our referee today. Offside, number 41 on the defense. That penalty is declined. The play results in the first down. So battle a little quick off the snap. And Lucas Taylor, Steve, picks up his 25th reception of the season. And if there is a man to look out for on the outside, it is number 12, Lucas Taylor. Ainge and he have a lot of confidence in each other. Going back. Oh, nice job. Cutting down the legs of Coker, and it was C.J. Bird flying up from the free safety spot. Now that was a, a perfectly timed blitz by C.J. Bird. He came off the slot. You're going to see him right here, right there. You're going to see him just come right off the slot. He timed it up perfectly on the snap, creeping up in there. Ainge had no chance to, to get out of the play they had called, and it's a great positive play for the Georgia defense. Second down at 12. Taylor and Austin Rogers, two wide receivers, shotgun movement up front. They go ahead with a play. Now they're going to whistle it dead as multiple flags hit the field. Marker on the play. Well, the question is going to be whether Ramon Foster, the offensive right tackle, moved first. But he's clapping, saying it wasn't me.
Prior to the snap, offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Old quarterback, is it a hard count by Ainge? Is it crowd noise causing issues with Georgia? Well, it's not the crowd noise because they're not making as much noise when Tennessee has the ball. It could be a hard count. If it is, Eric Ainge is doing a great job of mixing it up. Two wideouts near side. Uh, Ainge walks out behind center with a changeup on second down and seven. Little cut back, watch out, wide open. Another cut back and down is Coker. Well, they like this sophomore from Antioch, Tennessee. Hey, you know, Craig, great job by Eric. And you see the value of a veteran signal caller. He's up there barking out the signals, realize the defense that Georgia was in, changes the play to a very simple running play. It's the little things. Watch the way he sits up here. He's saying, hey, I know what they're doing. Everybody, trust me, run this play. It's going to be a good one for us. Impressive drive by Tennessee. First down at the Georgia 16-yard line. Again, right up the gut. Ooh, upended and around the nine-yard line. Hard running again by Coker. What a combo so far in this opening drive by Arian Foster and Coker. And the front line is just popping big holes. Yeah, check out the center, Josh McNeil, Anthony Parker, the left guard. And, of course, the fullback lead block right up into that was Chris Brown doing a great job getting Coker up into that line very easily. It's just not supposed to be that easy in the SEC to run the ball at the middle. 12th play of this drive, second down. And call it three. Little dance up the middle, little spin move, touchdown, Tennessee! Arian Foster, who just walked back in this game for Coker, puts a hand down on the turf and spins it in for six. What a run, what a drive. And remember, Craig, this Georgia defense, they're, they're very, very stout defense, only giving up 17 points a game. Tennessee made them look like the lower echelon team right there, made it look very easy. Foster scores his fourth touchdown of the season, nine yards out. Daniel Lincoln in to try the extra point, has not missed a PAT this season, 16 of 16, and the chip shot is up and good. An early 7-0 lead for Tennessee. Arian Foster with the hand down. Finds pay dirt. And Tennessee up by seven over Georgia on CBS. Get the Home Depot's tools for success. Well, we said early on that they got to freeze Foster. There's Arian Foster right there running the ball effectively and a good lob touch pass by Eric Gaines to him on another big pickup and then exclamated by a great spinning touchdown showing off his versatility, his balance. Arian Foster was a little too much for the Georgia defense right there. He had a little bit of help from his running mate in the backfield, Marcus Poker as well, and very, very smart Solid play by his veteran quarterback, Eric Gaines, as well. 81 yards on that drive, 12 plays, just over five minutes off the clock. Foster on that drive, five carries for 41 yards and had a reception for 11. It was Arian Foster from start to finish. Cole quick, the kick. Thomas Brown, who returned a 99-yard kickoff last year against Tennessee, turns up the motor, and they knock him down hard at the 23-yard line. Well, don't just watch the game. Get online and be part of the action with free college fantasy football at CBSSports.com. And find out more and draft your favorite teams today at collegefootball.cbs.com. The Georgia with their second offensive series. And Steve Berline will mark this ball at the 25-yard line. Craig, I would not be surprised to see Georgia early go after the, the corner on the left-hand side of the Tennessee defense, Brent Vinson. He's a true freshman making his first start. He's a guy that I think Georgia's going to have marked a little bit early in this game. Play clock winding down. Just got it off. Second man through. Stop is Thomas Brown by Big Dan Williams. Let's go to New York for an update. Here's Tim Brando.
Greg and Steve, Northwestern goes up in overtime on this C.J. Bechet to Omar Conte 12-yard pass. Five touchdowns for him on the day. Michigan State fails to answer as Brian Hoyer's final pass is incomplete. Last year, 41 was enough to win in overtime for Sparty. Not this season. Greg? Jimmy, thanks. A shootout. And we're looking for one here today. Here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Second down seven, Georgia. After the pickup of three, they fake the end around. They take it right up the middle and hard running by Brown. We talked to Thomas Brown. He's 5'8 and said, you know what? I haven't thought about that. I'm a, I'm a tough, hard-nosed guy. I like physical football, and he's going to dish it out, and he can take it at 200 pounds. You're darn right he can. And John Chavis, the defensive coordinator for Tennessee, he said those are some backs that do not quit. They keep going. They know how to finish off runs. That's what the problem is. And he said this game for his defense is all about respect. They're fighting for respect right now because they've really struggled so far this year. But they're playing hard today. Thomas Brown's been playing the game since eight years of age. Massaqua, the motion man, sets up far side. As Stafford looks, fires a rocket, and it's caught at the 40-yard line. Tony Wilson makes the grab, his fifth of the season. The redshirt freshman out of Daytona Beach, and that gives the Bulldogs the first down. Well, Craig, it's the little things right there. You talked about the running ability of Thomas Brown. He did a great job in the backfield. Tennessee came with a blitz off the Georgia right side, and Thomas Brown, no hesitation, knew exactly what his responsibility was, picked it up, allowed Matthew Stafford to make that throw. In motion goes Sean Bailey. Stops and comes back the other way, stretches out that handoff, and it's Marino. Well, Steve, as we have talked about, this is a difficult place to play. Look at this. Best records on the road since 2001. Texas, 24-2. and Georgia on the road, 23-3. and USC has found success, as has Stoops in Oklahoma. Well, it's absolutely amazing what Mark Rick has done at Georgia. They've won three straight times that we've talked about at Tennessee, but... To go 23 and 3 on the road in the SEC, that is unimaginable, and it's a, it's a testament to the way he gets his team prepared. And how about 9 and 2 against ranked teams on the road? Second down. Marino again, the ball carrier, and a host of Tennessee Vols in on the tackle. That's exactly what defensive coordinator John Chavis wants. He wants to bring the respect respect the passion back with this defense and it's all about physical play and they swarm Steve they swarm to the football you know we talked to Gerard Mayo we talked to all the, the members of this Tennessee defense that we did speak to they said we are going to get to the football every one of us is going to swarm we can't have those big plays anymore third down and eight and that's going to bring Stafford to the sideline and a timeout with 535 remaining opening quarter Tennessee with a 7 nothing lead on Georgia. What a look at Neyland Stadium, 86th year of college football here in this big house. They put 109,000 against Florida back in 04, today over 103. Early big third down for the Bulldogs, looking at third down and eight. You pass it, you run it. Well, I, th I think you got to pass it here, Craig. Third and eight, it's hard to... Hard to pick up eight yards on the third and long. Three wide receivers to the far side. Now they throw a man in motion. That's Marino. Stafford back to pass. Tries to take the middle incomplete. Off the hands of Tony Wilson, and that brings up fourth down. That was a big play by the Tennessee defense. They're not playing like a, a defense that's been struggling today. They've had the off week to get healthy and to get their minds right. Good, solid coverage on the on the attempted first down pickup. Matthew Stafford tried to jam it in there, but not to be. And this defense of Tennessee reminds you, Steve Berline, 11th ranked in the SEC, giving up over 435 yards of ball game. Mims will set the punt at about the 30-yard line. Hefty back to receive. Mims' first punt traveled 59 yards. This time gets a high hanger. Hefney, the fair catch, takes a bounce at the 10, and Georgia will down it inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Tennessee back on offense when we roll back on CBS.
Tennessee owns the early 7-0 lead over Georgia. Time now for an SEC moment presented by Sonic. And we take you back to 2001. Tennessee playing what amounts to a 4-4 fake. And there you go, that's a touchdown! Touchdown, my God, a touchdown! We threw it to, we threw it to Haynes! We just stepped on the five-second flip! We just stepped on their face with a hot nail boot and broke their nose! <laughs> the golden tones of Larry Munson not calling road games this season, beginning to back off on his schedule. He'll be at home, of course, calling Georgia football. Stepped on their face. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. Tennessee with a 7 nothing lead starts this drive at the 10 yard line. Aims to play action, throws a tough pass to the far sideline, and it's grabbed by Rodgers. That's catch number 21 on the season. And old quarterback, you know how tough that throw is. Oh, heck yeah, coming out with the play action, the good hard play action. This is not a, a token play action fake that Eric Ainge makes. He turned completely around, had no doubt in his mind where his one-on-one -on -one coverage was, and then threw a, threw a laser shot out there to the right side to pick up the first down, get him out of their own end zone. Ainge is four for four to start this game for 30 yards. That's a pickup of 11. Under five minutes. In the quarter, Ainge rolls, throws, complete at the 30, 35. Oh, and a hard hit in the back. Lucas Taylor, so dangerous after the catch. Keelan Johnson, the strong safety, came up strong and laid him out. Well, David Cutcliffe is the offensive coordinator. He returned in 06. Randy Sanders went on to be the offensive coordinator at Kentucky, and he's the man standing. What has he meant? Steve Berline for Cutcliffe to return to this program. Well, he has really done a great job of giving Eric Gaines some, some direction and really, really asked him if he wanted to be a great quarterback and said, if you if you want to be a great quarterback, here's the things you got to do. And he listed a bunch of things, and of course, Eric Gaines has taken off from that point. Foster to the 41-yard line, and you talk about the success, better with Ainge. You look at 04 to 07, and the completion percentage at 45 and change, well, he's up that now to 66% in 2007. 67%, what a jump that was from 05 to 06. Well, and look at the touchdowns interceptions, too. In 05, not only was it 45%, but he threw seven touchdowns, nine interceptions. He's doing much better. He knows what's going on, and Cutcliffe said, this guy's legitimate first round draft choice in the NFL next year. Low snap to get the handoff on second down and eight. And tough yards again by Foster, who's been a workhorse for the Georgia against Georgia's defense. Ellerby, the middle backer, made that initial hit. That was a good look at Arian Foster. Had a great chat with him yesterday. Said, hey, make sure you get my name right. Arian means water bearer, holder of knowledge. And he was pretty proud of that, yes, too. Yes, he, oh, yes. Holder of knowledge, almost like he knew something <laughs> that we didn't know. Well, he's the holder of knowledge. <laughs> Tennessee, two for two today on third down conversions. And they're looking here at third down and call it five. Shotgun, Ainge. Good protection, steps up and throws incomplete. Good job. Across the middle is Prince Miller to knock that ball down. Oh, really a nice play by Prince Miller, number 23 for Georgia. Eric Ainge had no, no question in his mind where he was going to go with this ball. You see, he gets the snap, reads the coverage right away, knows where his best matchup is, but just because it's the right matchup doesn't mean it's going to be a successful play. Prince Miller knew exactly what was going on, made a good play, got in there and stripped it. Big, big stop for the Georgia defense. And the first punt for Tennessee here in the opening half. Colquitt averaging 44 yards of poop. That's number one of the SEC. And the right footer really hangs it high. Mikey Henderson watches that ball fall out of bounds, and they're going to walk it up to about the 24-yard line. Tennessee 7 over 12th-ranked Georgia on CBS. Here in Knoxville, Tennessee with the early 7-0 lead with 2.59 to play. Arian Foster ran it in on the first offensive series for Tennessee from nine yards out. Stafford and the Bulldogs at the 23-yard line. Stafford tucks and runs, tries to pitch it around the corner, and is swarmed down at the 26-yard line, but a flag is back, or dropped back in the backfield at the 20. Yeah, it's kind of in the spot where you'd expect the holding call to be. Hmm. 
Bill Former, let's push it the other way. Thomas Schroeder making sure they get the spot. And here we'll get the uh, the call. Personal foul, chop block, number 77 of the offense. Half the to the goal, first down. That's the freshman, Sturdivant. You're going to see number 77, Sturdivant. He's right there at the top of your screen. Watch what he does. You're going to see the defensive end is engaged in the left guard, and he went down at the legs. That's, a, that's an injury waiting to happen, and the referee will call that every time. That's a true freshman start event right there, making a, making a freshman mistake going low when his man was really already picked up. First and 22 back at the 11-yard line. Pitch out. Not much. Tumbling to the 15-yard line. Gerard Mayo, the tackle. Now we send you to New York for a Liberty Mutual update. Timmy. Craig, I want you to tell that quarterback from the Golden Dome that in the SEC, you have quarterbacks with two first names. John Parker Wilson goes 23 yards to Mike McCoy. Alabama trying to get well out of conference against Houston. They're up 23 nothing in the second. Alabama getting healthy up by 23. They lead that all-time series 9-0 against the Cougars. Trying to shake off the woes from last week against Florida State. A game you saw here on CBS. Yeah, two-game skid for the Crimson Tide. Stafford taken down at the 15-yard line. Wes Brown and DeMonte Bolden. You know, Craig, there are two true freshmen on this Georgia offensive line. The right guard, Clint Bowling, and the left tackle, Tristan Sturdivant. Chavis told us, the defensive coordinator, for Tennessee Volunteers, he said, we feel like we can get some pressure. They came off the outside. You saw number 23 right there coming off the edge with the blitz, and that's what generated the initial pressure. That was Ricardo Kemp. And Matthew Stafford had nowhere to go. Off the right side. To the 19-yard line, short of the first down. Boy, Tennessee is not playing like the 110th ranked defense in Division I football. No, they're feeling like they have something to prove, and they really do, Craig. And right there you saw Georgia pretty much conceding that Tennessee had won that particular battle right there. Third and long, Mark Rick saying, you know what, I'm not going to put the pressure on Matthew Stafford to make a big play backed up in our own end. Let's just run, get a few more yards, try and play the field position game. Mims third punt, averaging 53 yards a kick. His longest 59. This will be about from the seven yard line. Just gets it away off the side of his foot. Tennessee picks it up with the 43. <laughs> and instead of letting that, ba that ball bounce through, Hefty picks it up and runs it to the 42 yard line. Well, Monday on CBS, what does it take to melt the heart of TV's most popular bachelor? We'll find out on an all new two and a half men. That's Monday at 9, 8 Central on CBS. Final seconds of the opening quarter. Well, Tennessee getting great field position here, getting the ball at the 43-yard line. Now, this is a situation where you really have to take advantage. It was a great job by Hefney catching that ball, preventing it from rolling back into their territory. Ainge sees something he likes again. Looks like Georgia coming with the blitz. From the eye, LaMarcus Coker, the tailback. Hand off up the middle, bounces to the near side and picks up a tough yard at the 44 and a half. And Ellerby, he's nicknamed the Phenom. Number 33 for Georgia. He is the energizer. Yeah, we were told by Chavis that, or this, this is the guy that really stirs the drink. This by Mar Martinez that this guy really stirs the drink for the Georgia defense. And that's the end of the first quarter, Craig. Tennessee's defense. Impressive. First quarter done here in Knoxville, Tennessee, leading by seven. We'll return to Knoxville after this message and a word from your local station. One quarter at 7-0 Tennessee. Craig Bowler, Jack Steve Berline. Interesting first uh, first 15 minutes. Tennessee's defense really stood up, did the number on Georgia, and also about a 5-to-1 ratio 
uh, numbers of total offensive yards in this uh, first quarter. Well, that Tennessee offense, that first drive came out and made a statement. They were running the ball. They were throwing the ball. They were doing pretty much whatever they wanted. Put a lot of pressure on Georgia early. Now the question is, can they sustain it? In round, now they're going to throw it deep. The former high school quarterback, Lucas Taylor. 56 yards, and Coker catches it all by himself, and Taylor goes 56 yards. Great timing on the play call by Cutcliffe. Coming out of the break, catching him sleeping. Tremendous design and a touchdown for Tennessee. Daniel Lincoln, 17 for 17, and sneaks it up and in. 18 for 18 on PATs. Oh, trickery coming from Phillip Former. David Cutcliffe, the offensive coordinator, wide open. And trots in. 56-yard touchdown, Taylor to Coker. 14 nothing Tennessee over Georgia well it's time now for the playbook presented by the Hartford well here's Lucas Taylor right here what you're gonna see he's gonna come around in the reverse the Marcus Coker is gonna go down this way down the sideline they let him go the whole Georgia defense pursues to the reverse and you're gonna watch what happens the Marcus Coker slips down that left side all alone nobody there only the third touchdown pass allowed by the Georgia defense this year in five games. And we said it before, Lucas Taylor, former high school quarterback, looked like he knew exactly what he was doing right there. He had a little smile on his face. We talked we about talked it yesterday. Him. We said, is there a chance you might, we might see it throw a pass? He said, well, Me, you never know. never know. Boy, he would not let the cat out of the bag. 56-yard <laughs> touchdown toss, and now Brown. And the Bulldogs down a couple of touchdowns. They need a big return at the 20-yard line and then piled up at the 21. Georgia down by 14 here in Knoxville. 12th ranked in the country. And Steve, remember, three straight victories on the season. They knocked off Western Carolina after that loss to South Carolina. Big win on the road at Alabama. And then Ole Miss a week ago, 45-17. Well, this is a team that really does play well on the road. Mark Rick, he said the key in a hostile environment is for your quarterback to remain poised. We'll see if young Matthew Stafford can keep his composure and really just understand there's a lot of football left. Pitch, Marino. Maybe two yards, and let's get an update on uh, Texas and Oklahoma. Let's go to Tim. All right, fellas, speaking of young quarterbacks, how about Sam Bradford of Oklahoma? He's a scratch golfer as well. He hits Jermaine Gresham for a one-yard TD pass. He had earlier completed back-to-back -back passes of 39 and 41 yards in the drive. Stoops his team up by seven to open the second quarter in the Cotton Bowl. Now both these teams trying to rebound from losses a week ago. Texas won the last two games over OU. Second down and seven. Stanford takes a hit, but after he throws it out to the flat, Wilson breaks one tackle, but not another at the 25. Boy, Tennessee has just turned it up. Not one notch defensively, Steve Berline. I'm talking two or three. Well, we talked about their youth, and, 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 John, and, and, and Chavis, the defensive coordinator, John Chavis, he's told us that this is a team that's got a, a lot of youth and is going to continue to grow up. But the key, I don't mind aggressive mistakes. I don't mind if a guy misses a tackle as long as the rest of the guys are pursuing and doing their job so they don't give up the big play. That was a great example right there. Another big third down here in the first half for Georgia. Down by a couple of touchdowns. Third down at six. Shotgun Stafford throws it over the middle. Tipped and incomplete. Boy, nearly had a chance for the pickoff around the 45-yard line. Pressure by Reynolds, or did Reynolds get a hand on it? No, there, there, nobody got a hand on it. There might have been some pressure by Reynolds. Matthew Stafford, he was obviously expecting his freshman tight end, Bruce Figgins, to sit down in the hole. The freshman, I believe, the big freshman, number 89, tight end, ran through an open zone and, and almost led Matthew Stafford into an interception. They were very fortunate that ball was not picked off after the tip.
Mims set to punt at the 10 yard line. Hefney back at the 35 for Tennessee. Oh, it's blocked! Blocked at the 18 yard line. First time this season, Mims has had a punt block. Multiple flags down. I don't know, uh, Steve piling on a face mask, but one, like two, three hankies down. Yeah, well after the play, though. I think this was all may maybe something that happened in that little skirmish over the tackle there at the end. Personal foul. Ooh, unsportsmanlike conduct. It's not going to affect the possession issue. Obviously, Tennessee's going to keep the ball. It'll just be moved back 15 yards from the spot of the foul. And here's Thomas Ritter. There were two fouls on the play. Both after the ball became dead. We had a personal foul. Late hit with the helmet on the, on the Tennessee. And we had a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against Tennessee. Both penalties are being forced. Whoa. First down. Moving on back, almost Steve to near uh, to midfield. Right here, Felix Wilson, number 35. Watch him come through. He shoots the gap. They got too much pressure coming off that side. And he, I'll tell you, people, you practice this every single day in practice on special teams. Selling out, giving your body for the football. That's a great example of what it takes to block a punt at this level. Unfortunately for Tennessee, 30 yards and penalties enforced. But I think Phil Fulmer and David Cutcliffe will gladly take the ball right around midfield every time if they could do that. Last time Tennessee blocked a punt against Georgia in Athens last year. And they pull it off here in Knoxville on first down and 10. Hand off far side and it's Hardesty. His first carry to the 44 yard line. Ontario Hardesty. And what we're seeing here now Craig is that, that Tennessee really is in a comfort zone right now with their offense. They're they don't want to be throwing the ball 40 times a game. I, David Cutcliffe loves to put the ball in the air, but he does not want to throw it and put all that pressure on Eric Ainge. He knows if they can stay ahead or in the ball game, they can get that running game going and really have a chance to make some plays up the field. Well, you just saw 65 yards just thought far here in the first half. And they'll run it right up the middle. A couple of hard pops. I guarantee you the Bulldogs and balls will hurt you all day long. Hardesty, his second carry. And maybe two to the 41. They're going to mark it at the 42-yard line. Now, there is some popping going on down there. Oh, we yeah. can almost feel the, those Georgia helmets slamming into Hardesty. This, this Georgia team's not going to go away now, Craig. You know, they, Mark Rick is, is too good a coach, and they've got too much talent on that team to lay down. They're going to they're going to keep scratching and clawing and try and find their way back into it. Well, he's not king of the road at 23 and three because he falls down or shuts the door down early. Movement up front. Ames escapes and throws. Oh, Josh Briscoe with a circus catch. But a flag down at midfield at the 40. Middle of the field at the 40-yard line. An eligible man downfield. Takes away a good play. That was a designed rollout by Eric Ainge. Coming to the side, made a heck of a throw. Kind of scared me when he let go of the ball. Ineligible player downfield. Number 51 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. We play third down. That was Vladimir Richard, number 51, who was downfield before Eric Gaines let go of the football. Obviously, an offensive lineman cannot do that. Took away a good positive play. Now, instead of a third and four situation, looking at a third and eight and a half to nine. Third down and eight. Under center goes Eric Ames, 6'6", 220. Has a good view of that Georgia secondary. Stands up in the pocket, sling shots it across the middle. Rodgers has it at the 30-yard line and move the chains once again by Tennessee. Uh, one, one of the things that makes David Cutcliffe's offense so difficult to cover is even though they go with the same personnel, they call it the 12 personnel package, 
They're going to run 18 different sets, Craig. They told us that. They, they, David Cutcliffe told us they're going to run 18 different offensive sets out of the same personnel grouping. That time they were in a bunch formation where all the receivers were in tight. Very hard for the Georgia defense to process who's going where and who's got what. Aaron Rodgers wide open for the big first down there. And fresh downs for Tennessee. Ainge again changing it up at the line of scrimmage. Three step drop throws far side on his cock and driven out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Let's go back to New York and here's Tim. Time for college football's annual running of the Bulls on a Saturday. South Florida going up on Howard Schnellenberger's Florida Atlantic team. Ben Williams scores from five yards out there starting the second. And the unbeaten Bulls lead at seven to nothing for head coach Jim Levin. Craig. Well, Tim, South Florida 16 point favorites going in today. And how about that program? Well, when you look through that top 10, you see South Florida in there, but I'll tell you, they've earned it. They have earned it by playing good football. Hardesty spins inside the 15 yard line. Watch how physical this run is by the Tennessee offense. Right off the right side, Chris Brown, number 28, sealing the outside, getting in, getting in too. Akeem Dent, number 51, creating a natural hole. Look at the spin move right there by Hardesty. He's looking like a young man that wants to see that ball a little bit more. Keep running that way, picking up those kind of yards. You're going to get the ball a lot more. How about 5.3 yards a carry? Wow. So far in the first half here by Tennessee. Hardesty Busted once play. Ellerby bringing some pressure along with Cade Weston. Yeah, then Danell Ellerby right there was a boy. He was like a rocket shot out of a cannon there in the backfield right as Hardesty got that football had no chance did a great job just to avoid the four or five yard loss ended up making it only a one yard loss. Yeah, Georgia fans a little concerned I would say here in the really the halfway mark as that ball falls incomplete to Taylor. Well, you got 103,000 people clad mostly in orange, but there's a few scattered in red throughout this stadium. And there's another flag down. Offside on the defense. Center lineman. Five yard penalty. Remain second down. You know, it's just amazing how things when, when you get the momentum going you get things going your way how it kind of snowballs and same for the the bad side of things the Georgia Bulldogs they make a good play finally but someone lined up lined up off sides which is one of the penalties I really think you you really cannot excuse there's no reason you can't look in and see if you're off sides or not second down Georgia the third ranked defense in the SEC two wide outs near side and off the gut. Breaks one tackle, another. Look at that. Touchdown! Hardesty! Power football. You hit it right on the head, Craig. That is physical, straight ahead, nothing. Nothing special about that. That just says we're running the ball right here. Great job by the Tennessee coaching staff. They saw something in the look that Georgia presented. They called Eric Gange. He looked over. They changed the play to that power play off the right side. Ends up being an easy walk-in touchdown for Hardesty. Daniel Lincoln, a workout here in the first half. Kicks his third PAT at Tennessee with a 21 nothing lead over 12th ranked Georgia. Power, honesty. Power football. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. More SEC action tonight. Number nine, Florida taking on number one ranked LSU. You'll see it at eight o'clock Eastern here on CBS. The Gators and the Bayou Bengals of LSU. You look at the tail of the tape between these two teams. Points of plenty, yards of plenty. Expect a shootout tonight. Oh, is it going to be a shootout, boy? That's going to be a nice one. I'm gonna, I know what I'm going to be doing. 
a little bit later this evening checking that one out for sure i'll be right with you yes sir you know it takes two to tango right 21 nothing but you got to get the uh uh, the block and then you turn it in to touch you turn it into six and that's exactly what Tennessee did They got the big special teams play and they pay it off with Hardesty's 10-yard run. That's exactly right You got to cash in when you get those opportunities And now Georgia they're faced with a difficult task now that the one thing you got to keep in mind There's still nine minutes over nine minutes left in the second quarter. You put together one good drive right here Get some momentum, some confidence going, then you're back in this ball game. Don't panic yet. Thomas Brown floats to the far side, takes it at the two-yard line at the 10, makes a cut at the 15. And so far, Brown has just been corralled by Tennessee special teams. Georgia will start at the 17-yard line. Let me remind you as well, Steve, that Georgia's offense is powerful. They put up 33, nearly 33 points a ball game, and I'm surprised they've got the, the shutout right now here with just over nine minutes to play in the half. Well, this Georgia offense has not had any rhythm whatsoever yet. It started with the three and out the first time they had the ball, and they've only got a couple of first downs. They've really struggled to figure out what this Tennessee defense is bringing, and, and really, they're not doing anything special. They're just getting up in their face and making plays. Thomas Brown, the lone back. Tennessee creeps up what looked to be a blitzer. He walks back, and the handoff right up the gut. Two tough yards by Brown, and again, Tennessee with that swarming, tackling defense. And so far, it's been about Tennessee and their defense. Well, this is not the defense that I don't think anybody was expecting to see today, especially not Georgia. They've been physical on Matthew Stafford. They're flying. Look at all the people flying to this ball here. Sure, there were a couple missed tackles, but when you got three or four more guys coming full speed to that ball, good things are going to happen. And this is the Tennessee defense that really wants to make a statement today. So far, so good. John Chavis, as he leans in for a look, he told us straight up, it we're fighting for respect. And so far, I think Georgia's going to give him that respect in the first half. Throw to the flat, far sideline, caught by Sutherland, the fullback. And let's go back to New York, Texas, Oklahoma. Here's Tim Brando. Uh, the old state fair game, gentlemen, perhaps not as meaningful with both teams having lost once. But uh, in Dallas, Colt McCoy evens things up, finding Jordan Shipley for a touchdown. Think about this. In the Big 12, who are your unbeatens right now? Missouri and Kansas. Back to Craig. How about that? How about that step for uh -huh. Mr. Brando? Well, he's talking about the two named John Parker Wilson, quarterback there, and then Colt, Colt McCoy for the Texas Longhorn. What a Texas name that is. Third down and short. Movement. Flags. It may have been the freshman getting the early jump. Sturdivant. Hard to the snap. False start. 77. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains four down. Oh, Steve Burline. Instead of third and short, you got to walk it back five. It's going to be five and a half they need. And Sturdivant. The big freshman, the former North Carolina Player of the Year uh, with he, the jump. He is a heck of a player. I mean, this kid is a prospect and a half. He can play, but, you know, he hasn't been in this situation too much. And like you said, there's a big difference between third and six and third and one. He's never played in Knoxville. No, he has not. Until today. Third down, six. The motion man, Massaqua. From the shotgun, go Stafford. Quick drop, quick throw. It's caught. And spinning for the first down, did he get there? It'll depend on the spot. He did get past what looks to be the 25-yard line. But he had to get all the way to the 26 or just past the 26, I believe, Craig. So I, I don't think he got it. Tennessee did a great job of hanging on to him, not letting him get that extra yard he was fighting for. Steve, it's fourth in the football. Too early yep. to take a chance, down 21? Yeah, it is. Mark Rick, he'd like to do it. He'd really, really like to do it, but no hesitation. It's not the right thing to do. If you're into the second half, maybe so, but... No, How about, you know what? What if you're at midfield at this point in the game? Oh, yeah, midfield, no doubt about it. Midfield, you got to do it, but backed up in your own end zone. If you don't get it, you're handing them more points. You make it a four-score ball game. You don't want to get down four scores going into halftime. Mim set to punt inside his own 15-yard line. Hefney set to return at the 35 for Tennessee. Good hang time. Hefney at the 35, and that's where he'll put the hand up. Fair catch, and Tennessee... With a three touchdown lead, we'll come back on offense. A 40 yard punt.
21-0 Tennessee over 12th ranked Georgia 8-13 to play in the first half and coming up on the Geico halftime report Tim Brando and our good buddy Spencer Tillman will get you caught up on all the scores and highlights on another busy day in college football stay tuned that's coming up on the Geico halftime report and Steve Berline it's simple Georgia needs a stop you think uh, Georgia needs a little bit more than a stop they need some good things to start happening in bunches for them but as we said, a lot of football left to be played. And these guys are good. They can make it up in a hurry. At the 35-yard line, Tennessee. And Eric Ainge under center. Three wide receivers. Ainge sets up and throws. Caught at the 45-yard line. And out of bounds goes Moore. Denarius Moore, the freshman from Tatum, Texas. That is just way too easy. You're going to see Brian Evans, the corner on the right side. Look at how wide open. This is no, there's no trickery involved here, Craig. That's just a straight fade pattern up the sideline, straight drop back. That's actually Asher Allen, number two, on that side there. But for whatever reason, he was looking in the backfield, trying to, to see if a running play was coming at him. Made that an easy throw and catch for Eric Ainge and Mr. Moore out there on the outside. 34 yard pickup and you can see why Eric Ainge is hitting 66 percent of his passes so far this season. He's hit six different receivers so far in this game and we haven't played a half. Ainge again pulls back and pulls that trigger to the 25 yard line balls out but it was whistle dead and again the catch this time Taylor. Look at these first four possessions though for Tennessee. You know one punt. OK that's not too bad. You got three touchdowns, 12 plays on the first drive. That is a perfect, perfect chart. If you're any head coach in the country, you take that every day. You don't mind a punt once in a while. You don't want turnovers. You don't want bad things. A punt is not a bad thing all the time. Finish it off with touchdowns on a high percentage. You're going to be a happy man. And Age has hit 9 of 10, 110 yards passing here in the first half. The Vols looking at second down and four as we creep up on the seven minute mark. Two broken tackles by Foster. And instead of being dropped for a loss, a three yard gain to the 21. Well, that was a great three yard run by Arian Foster right there. Just a little, he's a big man back there. He goes 225 pounds, but he was a little bit light on his toes there. He was able to make a few guys miss. and. Really, Georgia should have had him at the line of scrimmage at worst, but he picked up three yards. They're going to measure. It's almost a first down. And we talked to Foster in length yesterday. He wears a knee brace. Remember, Steve, in practice, just to, for safety's sake. Of course, takes that thing off during game time. And there you see as they stretch the chains about a half a football short. Well, this is the kind of play now, right now, where Tennessee has all the momentum going. You'd think with the way they've been running the football, they're going to pick this up nice and easy. But Georgia is a very, very good physical defense. And the play like that, they could find a way to stop Tennessee on this play. That'd be great, great boost for their psyche. Well, Georgia's given up only 17 points a game thus far this season. Today, 21 in the first half. You do have to be careful for a play action pass here, though. Age under center. They're going to go right up the middle. Now they go outside. Foster bounces. And touchdown. 22 yards. It was designed to go up. He went out and races in for another Tennessee touchdown. I don't think he was touched on that play, Craig. Nobody got a hand on him. Too easy. That was a bounce play. It's called a bounce play where you you run it up inside. Give the look. It's all coming inside, but the blocks are set up for the back to bounce it out to the outside. And boy, did the, the Georgia Bulldog defense sucked inside on that. Made it very easy for Arian Foster to get to the corner. Daniel Lincoln back in to try another PAT. Georgia fans in this building stunned. As those watching around the country, Tennessee fans rejoice. <laughs> as Lincoln boots in his fourth PAT. Foster, there it is, designed up the middle, bounces outside, and I don't think anybody got a hand. You're right. Runs it down the sideline. He took a push as he ran it in. Nine carries, 70 yards, and two touchdowns for Arian Foster, Tennessee. Up big on 12th-ranked Georgia. 
Tennessee with a 28 nothing lead on 12th ranked Georgia Arian Foster with two touchdown runs here in the first half watch Chris Brown go over the top on this and you're gonna see Arian Foster comes up inside and then bounce it outside watch what the effect of Chris Brown going over the top has on the Georgia defense they all come inside that play was designed to suck everybody inside Chris Brown great job over the top Kevin Cooper was the other back in that power eye formation and they finish off the four play 65 yard drive with an easy touchdown by that man Arian Foster right there boy he wishes they'd all come that easy I guarantee you and Britton Colquitt set to kick booms it out to the corner that ball flies out of bounds around the 10 yard line. And Steve, you notice they are keeping the ball away from Thomas Brown, who burned Tennessee for that 99 yard kickoff return last year. Yeah, but I don't think you want him to kick it out of bounds. That ball no. goes out to the 35 yard line. I think you'd, you'd rather not have him start there, but it, there is a definite fear factor, you know. Philip Fulmer told us. And here's Thomas Ritter. Free kick infraction. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Georgia elects to put it in play at the 35 yard line, first down. Well, Monday on CBS, it took 16 years for Horatio Kane to find his son. Now, in one instant, he could lose him forever. Catch an all new CSI Miami Monday on CBS. Still time here before halftime for Georgia to turn it around. Down 28. Play action. Stafford steps up, throws deep over the middle, and a sliding attempt by Massaqua falls incomplete. Stafford took a seat after that toss, and that brings up second down and 10. You know, Matt Stafford's a big, strong guy. You see a little wince there, Payne. He did take a shot. Comes out of the play. I got a nice, safe play action protection. But you're going to see, boom, that hit right there on the shoulder. That hurts. That's that's the kind of hit that Tennessee wants to see all day. And if you're Georgia, right there was a chance to make a play. And Massaquai got he has got to make that catch. Even though it wasn't a great pass, Georgia's got to have people step up and start making plays right now. Stafford four of nine passing for 20 yards in the first half. A pitch, a little hold, not for long. Marino runs it for about six yards to the 40, come up to 41 yard line. Marino coming in, Steve, 5.5 yards per carry. The redshirt freshman from Belford, New Jersey. So you got like the uh, yards per carry. Brown averaging 5.6 and Marino 5.5. Well, the danger now, though, Craig, is that you're almost taking those guys out of the game the more you fall back. No Sean Marino and Thomas Brown. Great running back, but you can't run the ball if you're down 28 points. Third down five, pressure from the corner. Stafford takes a seat. Boy, Tennessee's defense has done very little wrong here in the first half. That was JT Mapu that was leading the charge there for pressure in the backfield. But, you know, you, you, you're, your two biggest assets right there, Thomas Brown and no Sean Moreno, these are guys that really scare the heck out of any defensive coach. Look at that. Four rushes for 10 yards for Moreno, six for 20 for Thomas Brown. This Tennessee defense is not letting those two guys be a factor. And I'll tell you who else, Eric Ames in that offense scoring 28 points is almost eliminating those guys from the game plan. Mim set to punt. Beautiful kick. High, high hanger at the 15-yard line. And that's where Tennessee will take the football with a 28-point lead. And Monday on CBS, see why critics call the Big Bang Theory the funniest new sitcom of the season. Check it out Monday at 8.30, 7.30 Central, right here on CBS. I think George has been hit with a Big Bang, don't you? I mean, <laughs> 28 first half unanswered points. Wow. It is definitely lopsided here through nearly two quarters. 5.05 to play before halftime. Tennessee at the 15-yard line up by 28. Ainge, a little stop and go up the middle. 
Good second effort again, and Coker, the ball carrier. Well, you just saw that graphic there, Craig. 14 first downs for Tennessee, only one for Georgia. Why is it? Look at this. Look at the running game for the Tennessee Volunteers. Right there, hardest tee on the touchdown run, the third touchdown for the Tennessee Volunteers. It's been a three-headed monster for the Georgia Bulldogs to try and face Arian Foster, LaMarcus Coker, and then Hardesty on the second touchdown. Those guys, boy, they're playing really, really well right now, and Georgia's got a handful of all of them. Already 114 rushing yards for Tennessee. Tennessee with a 281 to 43 advantage in total yards, and there's a few more. As Ainge has been able to thread the needle not once, but a couple of times as Lucas Taylor Takes it to the 21-yard line and the cover corner, Asher Allen. Oh, that was a dangerous throw, too, there by Eric Ainge. He's, he's been on fire all day. He's got a lot of confidence and a great arm. and Everything working in his favor right now, but that was a little bit shaky. There were some, some guys for the Bulldogs that had a chance to make the play, Asher Allen being one of them. And that's the kind of play that Georgia defense has to make. They've got to step up and force the issue, make a few things happen. Tennessee, four of, four of five on third downs, rolling out. And this time, I think Philip Former nearly caught that ball, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> the old offensive lineman trying to show he's got some hands. But that right there, Craig, was a really a, a play that would not be noticed by anyone except someone that really studied the game. Eric Ainge made a very, very smart play there. He knows the situation. He knows his team's up 28 to nothing. There was pressure on him coming out on the rollout. Nobody opened up the field. He throws it out of bounds, says, we are not going to give these guys a chance to get in the ball game. Mikey Henderson back to receive the punt from Colquitt. His first boot went 33 yards inside his own 10. Good snap as Georgia tries to set up for the return. <laughs> out of bounds at the 29. Well, tomorrow here on CBS is doubleheader action on the in the NFL Jets and Giants Cleveland taking on Brady and New England. The late game can LT and San Diego recover against the Denver Broncos. And of course, it all begins with JB, Dan, Mr. Sharp, Boomer and the coach. Cornell and Belichick. How about that matchup tomorrow? Two and two are the Browns 4 no New England bragging rights Jets Giants. And where has San Diego gone? One and three, a Super Bowl pick team. Who would have thought that, boy? And they, and they got a lot of problems. It's not a, not a, not a good, it's about as bad a one and three as you could have. Stafford. Thomas Brown, the intended receiver. That stops the clock with 3.26 to play before the half. You know, a great job by the punter for Tennessee right there. Britton Colquitt. Philip Fulmer told us in our meeting that he if if Mikey Henderson got a chance to catch a ball he'd have to go up into section X to make the catch because he was not going to kick it to him and give him a chance to make a play. Second down. Marino stuffed and driven back no gain will be third down and 10. And again what John Chavis wanted needed preached all week long get back to what we do well swarm the football Craig, and that's what they've done here in the first half do you have any idea how many people were on that pile for Tennessee I think there were nine out of eleven orange jerseys in on that tackle Chavis may have jumped on himself <laughs> my goodness he was out there in spirit I'll tell you that he's loving it right now Georgia fans hurting Tennessee fans having a good time in Knoxville 249 to play second quarter Stafford sets up the screen. Marino has room. And maybe a first down at the 44. They're going to mark him about two yards past the marker. Brent Vincent, the freshman from Hampton, Virginia, who got the start today, makes the stop. And it's first down, Bulldogs. That was the most well-executed play that Georgia has run today. Great timing on the call. A little screen pass out to the right. They were expecting pressure. Sure enough, there it comes. Pressure coming off the edge. The perfect play called. Moreno slipping out there behind three big offensive linemen, picking up the tough third down and nine, trying to get this ball rolling for the Georgia Bulldogs. Back up the middle, and a push by Moreno picks up four. 
at the 48 yard line. Steve, what would this do for Georgia to find at least a three point, just a field goal before halftime? Well, a field goal would, would help, but a touchdown would help a lot more. I mean, my, Mark Rick, he knows, he knows that his team has to score some points on this drive. And if they can get it in the end zone, get a touchdown, he might be able to convince his team in the locker room at halftime that they have snatched some of the momentum here and they can build on it. They get the ball first in the second half. They can maybe close it to a two touchdown game. The clock. A minute 40. They do have two timeouts to work with as they're trying to push into Tennessee territory. Stafford sets up and throws incomplete. That will stop the clock with 133 remaining. And the intended receiver, the tight end. Pass intended for Chandler. That was, was that Chandler? That was Trip Chandler. Trip Chandler, who uh, conveniently tripped. <laughs> Watch what happens. He's number 86 coming in from the left side of your screen. Nobody near him. Whoop. Goes down. Well, that's. That's just the kind of day it's been for Georgia. Matt Stafford was ready to throw that ball on time. Chandler was open for a, probably a conversion of the first down, but he falls down incomplete pass. Big target, 6'6", 263 is Chandler. Here's a big third down and six. A little quick slant. Ball was caught. Now they're going to say incomplete. Well, I thought he made a football move. Massaquan, it was stripped away. No. So fourth down now for Georgia. No. That, that ball was never caught, I don't think, Craig. That, that was a heck of a play by the Tennessee. Flying out there, reading. It was a double screen fake set up out there. Felix Wilson, number 35, was the one that went flying out there. Almost hit Sean Bailey as soon as that ball got there. Sean Bailey, I guarantee you, he heard footsteps, and that's what caused the pass to fall incomplete. Seventh punt of the first half by Brian Mims. Standing at his 34-yard line. Kick back and down to around the 14-yard line. A minute and 14 left to play. And now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. It's Eric Ainge, carries a 3.43 GPA. In political science, how about an academic All-SEC in 05 and 06? And Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Tennessee's General Scholarship Fund. Not only can he study and get it done in the classroom, how about 10 of 12 in the first half, 115 yards? You know what? This kid just continues to, to impress me. He, he is a, a great great conversationalist you love sitting down and talking to him and hearing his perspective he wants to learn as much as he can whenever he has a chance to talk football he just loves it great kid Foster, Foster. drop for maybe a yard loss back around the 13 yard line you know another thing about Eric Ainge he told us that he has Peyton Manning's cell phone number another former fairly well-known Tennessee quarterback and he doesn't call him just to call and, 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 and you know, hang out and just see what Peyton's up to. He calls him specifically to ask him for advice on certain plays and certain packages they have in the games because there are similarities between what David Cutcliffe and Tennessee run now and what Peyton Manning does at the Indianapolis Colts. So they've got that kind of relationship. Breaking a tackle onto the 21 yard line is Foster. They're just to quickly follow up. He said, you know what? He maybe doesn't call me right back. <laughs> but, but I can guarantee you Peyton Manning will get back to me within a day or so. Getting him the call back at all tells you where he stands. How about this crowd? 103,000 on their feet. Tennessee puts 28 on the board against Georgia. Over the last four quarters between these two teams, Tennessee has outscored the Bulldogs 65 to 9. After the first half, Tennessee 28 nothing. We go to New York, and here's Tim Brando. A 28-point lead over 12th-ranked Georgia, and as we continue to celebrate 75 years of football in the SEC, Peyton Manning has the story of a former ball walk-on. Pound for pound, Tennessee football player Tim Towns was the hardest-hitting player on the field. And what the tenacious walk-on lacked in size, he made up for in hustle, dedication, and respect from his teammates and coaches. Today, Dr. Tim Towns is tackling sickle cell anemia as a star researcher and professor, and he's still making a profound impact on his opponent. The SEC, a story of character.
Well, so far, kind of a dog day afternoon for Georgia. That's August 6. 28 0 at the half. Tennessee over 12th ranked, the Georgia Bulldogs, Steve Berline. Let me ask you about uh, just the way Tennessee handled themselves in the first half. A lot of questions were on the table before this game. How about the defense? They've been very effective so far in the ground game. 120 yards on the ground for Tennessee. Well, the best friend that Georgia, the, the, uh, the Tennessee defense has is their offense and their running game. The, the Tennessee Volunteers have come out and established control of this game very early. The Arian Foster first touchdown, first drive, and then they come back with Hardesty right there on his third touchdown of the day and then finishing off their, their 28th point, fourth touchdown of the first half. The easy cruise into the end zone by Arian Foster. It's just been one of those days for Tennessee. 120 yards rushing. Eric Ainge has played very well, but look at the stats right there. Very, very much one side. Only 59 total yards for the Georgia Bulldogs. Two first downs. This game has been dominated from the very first drive by the Tennessee Volunteers, both offensively and defensively, and, and really even on special teams. They've been able to neutralize the great return game of the Georgia Bulldogs as well. And those first half stats brought to you by Wrangler. As you saw moments ago, that's Mark Richt, the seventh year head coach for Georgia. And again, he is the king of the road, 23 and three road record. And that, well, I'll tell you, unless something happens here in a big way to start this third quarter, I could drop to 23 and four before the night is over. And that is the biggest halftime deficit Mark Richt has ever faced as a head coach. So they definitely have their work cut out for him. And with the way the way this place is going to be rocking in the second half and with the mo momentum that Tennessee has right now, it's going to be a very, very difficult task. Cut two will kick it away for Georgia. Tennessee will start the third quarter with the football at the 11-yard line. A little fumble on that exchange. Coker picks it up, dances, breaks a tackle at the 25, still on his feet, and finally dropped down at the 26-yard line. Now the only... The only thing that Tennessee should be thinking about, the only thing they might want to change in this second half, I still believe David Cutcliffe is going to be very aggressive with his play call, and they're still going to take some shots, but they have to make sure they do not have the bad play. The play that gives Georgia a quick, easy score, puts them in position for a quick, easy score. They're still going to be aggressive, but it's got to be cautiously aggressive. Chris Brown lines up as a fullback as Ainge. For the third time today, changes things up, and that puts Brown back on the line as a tight end. On first and 10 from the 25-yard line, play clock winds down to four. They get the play off, and around the corner comes Foster. Stiff's arm and his ankle tackled by Asher Allen. Allen, the volunteers in the first half, Ainge, Foster, and Taylor. Ainge nearly perfect, 15, 115 yards. Taylor with that touchdown pass. Yeah, and pass. Foster with 11 attempts, so 76 yards. Yeah, three really productive players in the first half. And, and we could have put a few more up there. And I think most importantly, that offensive line that has not allowed anybody to get near Eric Ainge and really done a great job opening up holes for the running game. Second down and 10, a stumble by Eric Ainge. One of the few miscues today by Tennessee's offense. And that goes down as a sack, doesn't it? That would probably go down as a sack, and it was really just a trip. But Eric Gage only sacked two times in 171 passes coming into this game. Look at him right here. He just tries to get away from the center. I know it's happened to me. I've got those big feet, too, and in my days, I used to get stepped on once in a while. Josh and McNeil. That is a terrible feeling, I'll tell you. It's embarrassing. Those have to be at least size 15s. I would think so, man. About six foot six tall. Two wide outs, top of your screen. Third down and 14, a quick throw, and it's caught by Briscoe. And Briscoe reaches out back to the original line of scrimmage at the 25-yard line. And you can see, look at the Georgia coaches on the sideline. They are trying to get this team fired up. They are really, really clapping, applauding that defense when they come off the field, saying that's the way you play Georgia football. They're trying to do whatever they can do to get this team believing they can find a way back in this ballgame. Now Colquitt back to punt, and Mikey Henderson. Would love to get his hands on the football back at the 32-yard line. Georgia down by 28. We'll get the first, their first offensive series here in the third quarter. Cole quit. Beautiful punt. Anderson, 22-yard line. Stutter step. Looking for a block. Stop and go. And boy, he has hit right on the numbers and driven back to the 27-yard line.
Continue to celebrate 75 years of SEC football. We take you back to 1980 and the legendary voice of Georgia's Larry Munson. Yes, Herschel Walker, a freshman. Our best, Larry Munson. He will do home games only. Scott Howard's in the booth with the Georgia Bulldogs. And a tough go thus far, down 28 nothing. But with the football at the 25. Little pitch. Not much. Marino. Well, in the first half today, Georgia, Stafford, you see his numbers, 5 of 13, 31 yards. Thomas Brown with an injured shoulder, doubtful of his return, and Marino, one reception for 11 yards in the first two quarters of play. Not very stellar on any of their parts. We're talking about a team that's used to grinding it out of the ground and really balanced offense. You saw Brown, the shoulder pads are off. He will not return, so Marino will get the vast of the carries. And a good play up to the 45-yard line, led by no Jean Marino, redshirt freshman, Belford, New Jersey. Important series here for Georgia. Very important series. They've got to do something. We've talked about how important it was to get something going at the end of the first half. They did not do it. Well, now they've got a chance to, to, to really set some tempo offensively try and make some good things happen and no Sean Marino is the guy they're going to look to this kid is a fiery young red shirt freshman he is a heck of a football player and he can really supply supply them with a spark two wide receivers set near side as Stafford resets that offense under center handoff little stutter step oh ho. Marino was met and hit right on the numbers by Gerard Mayo the middle linebacker the, the backers, the middle linebackers, the weak side, the strong side, you know, they've really got size of a strong safety. But as we talked to John Chavis, that's what it's all about. It's planned. That's who they recruit because it's all about speed at Tennessee. No doubt about it. These are these guys are all in that 215 to 220, maybe 225 range. And he said his comment to us was luck seems to follow speed. <laughs> that means good things happen when you got people flying around out there. And he's got guys that can do it. Second down. Over the middle, caught. Big play taken down by Durham, the sophomore. And he grabs his fourth reception of the season, and it puts Georgia into Tennessee territory. Well, that's the kind of play that you're going to need to see more of if you're a Georgia Bulldog fan. What a, what a great throw, tight throw by Matthew Stafford. up, up the, Right up the middle, did a good job reading the safety, realizing the hole was there in Durham. Boy, he's a six foot five, 200 pound sophomore. Not even re re remotely worried about that hit coming to him. 24 yard pickup on the rollout. Stafford has to throw on the run and it falls incomplete. Masaqua, the intended receiver. And Brent Vinson, the freshman corner. And on coverage, that stops the clock with 10.27 to play. In the third. You see Thomas Brown, they're gonna miss him. 180 yards last week on the ground against Ole Miss. And today, six carries for 20. Out with a shoulder bruise. Second down, 10. They line up in the eye. Both quarterbacks today shifting plays at the line as the play clock winds down to five, down to four, down to three. And they just get it off. Up the middle, Marino. Moreno carries and they'll mark him down 26 and a half yard line. Now well, Marino packs a punch, Steve. 5'11 goes about 210. And there's Craig Lumpkin, who's been out recently with a thumb injury, led the team in yards rushing last year, nearly 800 yards. And we thought we'd see him sometime today. We were told we might see him, and I, I would imagine at some point we will see Lumpkin out there. Mark Rick looking for a spot, a spark. Maybe Lumpkin might be able to provide it at some point. Third down and six. Bulldogs two of nine on third down conversions today. Touch pass to the corner. Touchdown, Bulldogs. Oh, what a catch by Goodman. 26 yards. Great pass, touch pass, man coverage.
coverage on the corner. Unbelievable catch. You're going to see Goodman just go up over the top. He's a six foot two, so he's a tall guy going up over the top. That is Brent Vinson, the true freshman right there who they were going after. We figured we'd see a shot up the field at some point, and Vinson is down. It looked like he came down kind of awkwardly on that right arm. Uh, he may have, uh, up on the may have jammed that shoulder a little bit, but hopefully nothing too serious. But what a great play by D'Amico Goodman. That, that ball was thrown at a, at a position where really it had to be a spectacular catch. Matthew Stafford gave him a chance to go up and make the play, which is all you really want to do. And your guy's got to step up at some point and make plays for you. Well, D'Amico Goodman, he did it right there. Tremendous catch. You see all the replay, and again, you hate to speculate. Looks like Vincent just nationally grabbed a wrist. That was an awkward position to fall. He was right on the back of Goodman, but D'Amico reached out at 6-2 and tipped really that ball to himself for the touchdown. And they're still looking at Brent Vincent, and he's up. Vincent, the freshman, getting a round of applause. 9.39 to play in the third, and Georgia shut out in the first half, finds the end zone, 26-yard touchdown by Goodman. And we need to say this, too, about Vincent. That was a heck, he was in great coverage. He really was. I mean, that was a tremendous effort on Goodman's part. It's good. Cut two with the extra point. And here's the move, Goodman. One on one coverage, little bump, grabbed it right off his helmet. And Stafford, with his eighth touchdown pass of the season, puts Georgia on the board. Well, Georgia fans finally was something to celebrate. The 26 yard touchdown by Goodman. Steve Berline, seven plays, 74 yards, just over three minutes off the clock. And of course, uh, Goodman, 26 yard touchdown and a tough, tough catch over the corner of Vincent well, and there's the freshman uh, still being looked at on the Tennessee sideline and yeah, he's in a lot of pain boy did Georgia need that or what I, it was something that they needed as we stated a few times they needed something to get get them pumped up and fired up and right there Mark Rick and his staff hoping that was the ticket right there and if you can shut down Tennessee and their powerful offense on this first drive go down and score now you got a ball game again got two from the 30. Angles it and out of bounds at the three. He, he touched that ball. He was straddled the line. That ball's going to go. I don't know. He had one foot inbounds, one foot out of bounds. The question is, I mean, that, geez, that referee, he's got a tough call to make because that, that ball was touched by Tennessee before it landed out of bounds. I believe it should go at the four-yard line. Free kick out of bounds against Georgia. Tennessee chooses to take the ball at the 35-yard line. First down. I'm not 100% sure about that. It, you know, you, you watch. He's got his right foot inbounds and his left foot. Maybe he's saying that right foot's on the line, but it looks like it's inbounds right there when he touches the ball. That ball is not technically out of bounds. That was very casual. Very casual on that... Uh, on that catch, 35-yard line, Tennessee starts this drive. They'll try it off the left side in a couple yards with a big push by Arian Foster with a couple of touchdowns a day. And how about time now for the Aflac. Thank you. Aflac trivia question. Who was the first SEC player to throw for over 10,000 passing yards? The first SEC player. We'll have the answer a little bit later on. Think about that, Mr. B. I will think about that one. I don't know if I can come up with it. Understand from the sideline, Vincent left shoulder. Low snap, picked up by Ainge. Throws and the catch. Austin Rogers breaks a tackle at midfield. Oh, upended. Upended at the 50 yard line. Let's go back to New York. Tim Brando with a Liberty Mutual update. Craig and Steve, Arizona State, USC and Cal are the three unbeatens in the Pac-10. And Alex Brink of Washington State is going to go 32 yards to Brandon Gibson. You know, 20 years ago at this time, Dennis Erickson was at Wazoo. Fellas, there were a few stops after that, weren't there?
Yes indeed Timmy Washington State by the way having some problems with defense and ground game woes but they have the early lead. Dennis Erickson well traveled. Tennessee on the move again 49 yard line of Georgia. Trying to scoot outside is Foster but good pursuit by the Bulldogs led by Ellerby. Danell Ellerby. Energy player, as we mentioned. You know what? Good high jumper in high school, by the way. I don't know a lot of guys that can go 6'6 high jumper. Second down and seven as we head to the eight minute mark, third quarter. Again, changing that play up at the line. Play clock to three. Down to two. And they just get it off with one. On the play clock. Quick throw near side. It's caught. And taken down is Briscoe by Asher Allen. And Craig, we did get a little bit of uh, closure on the issue on that kickoff. Found out that since the return man had one foot out of bounds, he's technically considered out of bounds. So even though he caught the ball, the the head of officials here told us it's actually a pretty smart play by that kick returner just to, to realize that he is out of bounds and that ball technically would then be considered out of bounds as well. Now so the drive goes to the 35. They've now pushed it to the 45 yard line of, of Georgia. Shotgun for Eric Ainge. You feel like you're watching Peyton Manning a little bit today on how the change ups going on at the line. I'm not sure they were able to get it off in time. Prior to the snap, the late game, number 10 on the offense. That happens. Five yard it penalty does. remains scored down. Well, Monday on How I Met Your Mother, one of these guys is about to live out every man's fantasy. See how it plays out Monday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. Well, Peyton Manning, the former ball quarterback, just a master now with the Colts on, on barking out the change-ups at the line. Ainge caught on that particular change. You've got to have the awareness of where that clock is. Down to five, ticking down to four on third down and 11. Ainge throws it, slings it across the middle. Great catch. And it's Lucas Taylor again. Guy's got glue on the gloves at the 40. And slow to get up, shy of the first down, missed it by what, Steve, about a yard and a half. About a yard and a half. Now, Philip Fulmer's got a choice to make here. You got fourth down at the 40 yard line, about a yard and a half to go for the first down. A tremendous throw and catch. Great job. Lucas Taylor was fighting for that first down. Great job by Prince Miller of not allowing him to break free for it. Eric Ainge feeling a little pressure off the edge and did a great job getting rid of that ball, putting it on the money. And looks like Tennessee's going to go for it. Well, today, Tennessee 2 of 5 on fourth downs. This will be fourth and short. Clock runs under six to play, and now the officials whistle timeout, Tennessee. Timeout, Tennessee. Timeout, Tennessee. 5.40 to play, third quarter in Knoxville. On your left, Mark Richt. On your right, Philip Fulmer what you call strategizing yeah I, I I wouldn't be surprised to see if Philip Fulmer tries to pull the Georgia defense off sides but I guarantee you Mark Rick was saying do not jump off sides on this play and you know Phil Fulmer if he does decide to go for it he knows he's only given Georgia the ball his 40 they still got to go 60 yards with the way his defense is playing I can understand why he'd do it this is a long yard yard and a half and they got it off the left side and a power run by Foster well, he was at full speed about a step and a half into that play. And no doubt about that one either. That was a very strong run. You, you can see that the Tennessee offensive lineman, again, not allowing any penetration, caving down that whole left side. And Arian Foster felt a little soft spot in there, knew with his big body rolling forward, he'd be able to pick up that yard and a half. No sweat, picked up a few extra. Dewberry made the tackle, fresh downs at the 35-yard line. Little draw. Not much. Let's go back to New York for an update. Here's Tim Brando. All right, fellas, Florida State's Michael Ray Garvin from just up the road in Saddle River, New Jersey.
Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. He's going to pick off this errant pass from Daniel Evans and take it back 43 yards for the touchdown. Among other teams, he chose Florida State over Georgia to this young man. 17 to 10 Knowles. Still plenty of time remaining in the third. And Tim, uh, that's Coach Bowden trying to use last week's win against Alabama to his advantage. Trying to keep that momentum going. Up top goes Ainge, nearly intercepted inside the 10-yard line, and good coverage by the strong safety, Keelan Johnson. Yeah, that was a matchup that I really think that Eric Ainge was looking for. He saw he had his big tight end, Chris Brown, outside, lined up on a safety one-on-one. -on -one. That's what you look like. That's what you look for. You see Chris Brown swinging it to the outside, knowing that a tight end on a strong safety generally is a pretty good matchup. Uh, I don't think that Matthew, that, that, that uh, Eric Ainge made the right choice going there because I don't think that there was ever a time where Chris Brown had the advantage, but I know why he was going there. Third down and 11. With 4.39 to play, third quarter shotgun is Ames. Low snap. Works it over. Oh, right down the middle. Caught. And a first down. Rodgers. And then move the chains inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Well, you know, look at how cool and composed Eric Ames looks in this throw. He drops back in the pocket. Tremendous protection. And just throws that ball right on the money. Austin Rogers turns his head. The ball hits him right between the numbers. He's got no choice but to make that catch, but a big catch nonetheless for a first down. On the pitch. And Coker is taken down around the 24-yard line. You know, see, we go back to practice on Thursday and Friday here at Tennessee. We saw that play a lot. Ainge is very comfortable with the with with basically it's not a hot slam, but the, the wide out still comes across. Has the uh, DB bite and he makes a nice strong cut inside. Yeah, he, he knew he knew exactly where Austin Rogers was going on that play. His anticipation was perfect because again the coverage was not that bad. The positioning of the defensive player was pretty good, but when you put it on time on the money, it's hard to stop. 11th play of this drive, Ames three-step drop throws and traffic, and again another grab by Rogers. Let's go back to New York once again. A very busy Tim Brando. You're right, Craig. South Florida's Ben Williams is going to score for the second time. A 10-yarder this time. Got him a greater Boca Raton area. It's now 14 to 7 South Florida. Used to be the big three. Now it's more than that with South Florida, even Florida Atlantic's club, taking players away from Florida State, Florida, and Miami these days. Craig. Well, Florida Atlantic playing them tough, though. I mean, you've got to respect that. 14 to 7. They're down at two. Pitch out near side. Here comes Foster. Tiptoes down the sideline and pushed out of bounds. At the eight-yard line by Lomax. Number 55 able to push out Foster. Boy, Arian Foster having his way today. He had his way last year, remember, against Georgia. Scored three touchdowns against the Bulldogs. He did, and, and right there, that was the same play we saw earlier in the game where all the flow goes left. They come back and pitch it out right. Arian Foster doing the tight roll back down the sideline. Great balance and a great run. Sixteen carries, Steve, 94 yards, closing in on a 100-yard day. Takes it, pushes, pass the five to the four. And a flag down, back of the eight. Dewberry, Darius Dewberry in on the stop for Georgia. It looks like the referees are discussing something. Offsides on the defense. Offside defense here with 38. Lined up in the neutral zone. Half the distance to the goal. We play first down. Well, they caught Marcus Howard, the speedy defensive end, trying to get that quick jump. He's got 4 4 speed. So, first and goal. Just inside the five-yard line, Foster the lone back for Tennessee. Foster. Cuts in, touchdown, balls. Another three-touchdown performance. Foster against Georgia. 
And what a tremendous answer by the Tennessee Volunteers to the, the momentum that Georgia might have had from that final. Finally, they get the touchdown on their last drive. Tennessee comes right back and says, uh-uh, it ain't going to happen today. Here's seven more for you. Foster goes to 98 yards and three touchdowns today. If he does go over 100, that'd be the seventh time in his Tennessee career that he goes over 100 yards. Lincoln, the freshman, with the extra point, and it's up and through. Well, the man with the name of Arian Foster, water bearer, holder of knowledge, he holds in his hands three <laughs> touchdowns today against Georgia. 35-7, Tennessee. Tennessee builds a 35-7 lead over 12th-ranked Georgia. 229 left to play in the third. 13 plays, 65 yards, just over seven minutes. How about the Aflac trivia question? First, who was the first SEC player to throw for over 10,000 passing yards? The answer, Eric Zire. From 91 to 94 at Georgia, 11,153 career passing yards for Zire. Foster, three touchdowns, 98 yards rushing. And Asher Allen set to return the kick from Colquick. And you're going to see George, I think, in an un uncomfortable situation where they've got to be trying to make plays in their passing game. They'd rather not have to do that, but that's the situation they're in now. No return, touchback to the 20-yard line, and here's Eric Zire with the Bulldogs, 91-94, to 94, old number 10. Flip of the wrist, and there he is today in the Georgia radio booth. Little incognito with the hat and sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> and can't be happy with what he's uh, seen thus far with Georgia, despite that last touchdown. But Tennessee answers to go up top 35-7. And he had a heck of a career at Georgia and, and, and played in the NFL for, for several years as well. Obviously very, very well known and very popular in Georgia. First and ten. Bulldogs three wide receiver set. Son Bailey. Play action. They throw it out to the flat. It's caught. Mikey Henderson and pushed out of bounds at the 25. Let's go back to Tim in New York. All right, Craig, last week was Shake Up Saturday, but today, number five has already gone down, Wisconsin. How about number six? Rusty Smith of Florida Atlantic to Jason Harmon. The South Florida has had some nice wins, but you don't want to go the way of Rutgers if you're the Bulls. They may be losing a little credibility, if nothing else, right now. Yeah, Tim, you look in the Big East, Connecticut, South Florida, Syracuse, Cincinnati, Rutgers. And West Virginia. Those conference games just starting to warm up in the Big East as Georgia goes to the air and finds a tight end, Trip Chandler. Mayo, the middle linebacker, dropped the tight end. And it's a first down for Georgia. And you're seeing, you're seeing a little bit more opening up of the offense by the Bulldogs, but these, these little six and seven, eight yard games is not what they need. They need to find ways to make some plays up the field. Matthew Stafford might have to start taking a few chances here. Stafford 110 yards passing. Quick drop hits a slant through the hands of Bailey incomplete. And on the last drive, you know, Matthew, St Matthew Stafford started to show a little bit of life. Going to no Sean Moreno right there. And then a good throw right down the pipe to Durham. And then finishing it off, obviously, with the 26-yard touchdown pass to Domingo Goodman. Those are plays that really made it happen quickly for Georgia. These, these ones that are five, six, seven, eight yards, that's not going to get them where they need to go. Set up the screen. In traffic, incomplete. That thing did not clear out. Tennessee stayed in her gaps. Well, that was a Walter Fisher broke that play up, number 95. Yeah, Walter Fisher did a great Walter job Fisher sniffing out that screen pass. Had no doubt in his mind what they were trying to do, and that's that's been, if there's been a play that Georgia's executed well against Tennessee today, it's been a few screen passes, and looks like Tennessee's all over it now. Fisher doing a great job right there. Well, what a turnaround of this game for the defense of Tennessee, led by John Chavis, the D coordinator. 
Again, he talked about we got to fight for respect, and they've gained a lot today here in Knoxville. Play clock to three. Stafford from the shotgun, flushed out of the pocket, throws, caught at the 45. And a big catch by Goodman, who grabbed that touchdown on that last series for Georgia. You know, Mark Rick is saying this is a kid, D'Amico Goodman, who made one big play for us. Let's get him back out there and see if he can find a few more for us. And there you see the Bulldogs season versus today. Look at look at that. 156 total yards today. Not exactly what you were expecting coming into Tennessee. 34 rush yards. 34. Shotgun. Stafford nearly intercepted. Did he get it? It was off one hand to the other. Now they're going to wave it off at the 37-yard line. Well, Carl had a look. Almost a devastating interception by Matthew Stafford. Any hope that Georgia had left could have gone with this ball being intercepted. You see it. Carl's the first one right there going up for it. Had a chance to make the pick. Goes through his fingertips. And then Eric Berry, number 14, coming over and just, just trapped that ball as it hit the ground. Good, good eyes. Hey, you know by the, the men in stripes. In the last two weeks, we're talking about the rushing against Tennessee. 433 yards rushing in their last two games. And today, Georgia only 34. Stafford up and over the middle in traffic incomplete. And that time, what happened? Harris had to turn into a defender. And the Tennessee crowd not too happy with that. Thought it might have been a little bit of offensive P.I. But Harris doing what he has to do. You cannot let that ball get intercepted. Any any quarterback, they want receivers like that. If, I, if you can't get it, for darn sure, don't let that defensive and back catch it. And ten. Third down and 10. Craig Lumpkin was in on that last play. Number six, who's been out with the thumb injury. Three wide outs. Stafford dropped to the shotgun. Stands, throws. Hot pass over the middle. Tight end stays on his feet. And Chandler keeping the Georgia Bulldogs alive. But a flag back down around the 44. Holding. And after a big game, Steve, you've been in that huddle before. That uh, can take the wind right out of you. It is tough. It is tough. You make a play, you get some momentum. Not to be. Holding number 77, offense. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. And that's a tough day for Sturdivant, the freshman. Well, this week, day's all new with Jennifer Lopez and Haish, Halle Berry. Plus, Monday, George Clooney's going to stop by and Kid Rock. All new only on CBS. Late show with Dave. Six penalties thrown against Georgia, 41 yards. They've been costly penalties. So that's, that's the key. That's not a lot of penalties. That's, they've been costly penalties. On third down, Stafford wants the deep ball. Man coverage, far sideline, jump ball, incomplete. Bailey going one-on-one -on -one with the free safety, Jonathan Hefney. And that's what George has been resigned to do now. They've got to try and find a way to make plays up the field. It was third and 20. You got to start taking some chances. That was a great, great, great attempt to get the ball to Sean Bailey. That's all you can hope for right now. But as you said, Craig, great defense by Jonathan Hefney, not allowing that to happen. Boy, I like the effort by both the wide out and the, uh, the safety. Yep. They both went for the ball strong. Mims seven punts today, averaging 39 yards. Standing at his own 20. Ooh, low snap. Beautiful kick. Inside the 10, takes the bounce and into the end zone. A 66-yard punt wow. by Brian Mims. 27 seconds left here in the third in Knoxville. Hundred seven thousand on hand today to watch Tennessee, Georgia. Thirty-five-seven Vols with twenty-seven seconds left here in the third quarter. Tennessee at the twenty-yard line. Ains the handoff. Hardesty skips out of bounds. That stops the clock with eighteen ticks left here in the third. You have to be impressed, Steve, with the uh, 
the running backs for Tennessee, especially today. Foster, three touchdowns. Hardesty's done a nice job off the bench, as has Coker. Yeah, they've all been very productive. You know, Coker was on the receiving end of that long touchdown from Lucas Taylor as well. They've, they've all made plays consistently. I know Philip Fulmer would have liked to have seen Hardesty stay in bounds on that play, though, to get to the end of the quarter. Hardesty, six carries, 34 yards, and a touchdown. Play clock down to 10. Eric Ames gets it off up the middle to the 31 yard line. And Hardesty throws the pads down, and that's going to wind down the third quarter. The first will move the chains. 11 ticks left. Rough three quarters for Mark Rick in Georgia. 12th ranked in the country, thus far only seven points. That ends the third quarter. Tennessee 35, Georgia 7. We'll return to Knoxville right after this message and a word from your local station. As we start the fourth quarter, Tennessee 35, Georgia 7. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Berline, glad you're with us on CBS. We came in Wednesday, Steve, a lot of talk and pressure about Philip Fulmer and his Tennessee uh, program. And you know what? A lot, of, a lot of questions answered today thus far. No doubt about it. I mean, unwarranted questions, in my opinion, by the way, to one, one losing season at, in his 16th year at the University of Tennessee. This is a guy who's an institution at the University of Tennessee, and I believe the criticism or the calling unjust his team has really responded and rallied today people have to be happy with their performance they have set the tempo from the opening kick his hardesty lowers his pads to the 35 yard line philip former with 35 years associated with this university offensive lineman from 68 to 71 he was 30 and 5 as a player with tennessee what a great man, too, though. I mean, just sitting down in his in his office with him the other day and just talking with him. He's just a great person who uh, who really takes a lot of pride in the kids and the, the development of these kids that have come through his program. We'll draw up to the 40-yard line. Well, it is all in the family here at Tennessee. You see, that's not, we didn't make that picture up. That is John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, as he played as a middle guard in the in the mid 70s, and a very young and fit a Philip very Fulmer. Very spelt Philip yes. Fulmer, yes, sir. And now we do the uh, the chest up shots on Phil Fulmer there. <laughs> and there's Chavis. Breaks one, two tackles, and Hardesty to the 49-yard line. You know, Milton Klein is a name very few people will know on the campus of Tennessee, but to Philip Fulmer, really his mentor. He was a history professor, and Milton Klein took a young Philip Fulmer under his, uh, under his wing and helped guide him through his days. And Philip Fulmer never expected, he told us, to be a head coach or a coach in college football. And look what's happened. He's never left. He's been here ever since. Two on the play clock, and now quickly Ainge calls timeout. 35-7, Tennessee. And now it's time for our Geico scoring recap. Well, Tennessee had the rhythm early. First drive of the game, Arian Foster takes it nine yards. Good second effort, 7-0. And then here is a beauty. Taylor hooks up with Coker, 56 yards. And it's a 14-0 lead for the Volunteers. And then it goes 21-0 as Hardesty takes it in from 10 yards. But there was more before halftime. Foster again hits pay dirt from nine yards out, turns the corner. And Tennessee opens up a 28 to nothing lead third quarter 
Georgia finally finds pay dirt. Terrific catch. Goodman from 26. It's 28 to 7. And then Foster again finds the end zone, takes a hard lick, and it's 35 to 7. And that's where we stand with 13 10 left to play in the fourth. Georgia with three timeouts if needed. Tennessee with one. And the Bulldogs keep popping away as they bring down Hardesty, led by Keelan Johnson, the strong safety. And Keelan Johnson really playing hard there, finishing off the tackle. He knows that his team needs some kind of big play. Got to try and pop that ball out of there. A turnover now would really be the only way that Georgia can try and get some momentum, get back in the ball game. And not a turnover in this game no, you, to this point. With a score 35 to 7, you'd expect that maybe Tennessee had created a few turnovers, but neither team has had a mistake today as far as turnovers go. Draw, a little stop and go. <laughs> and that's uh, Creer, the freshman out of Tatum, Texas, and make sure Later in the game, you stay tuned for the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. I got a feeling which one that's going to be. I think we know, unless something else happens here, but it was a thing of beauty. Under 12 to play fourth quarter. Shotgun, Eric Ainge. Drops it, makes the read. A little bobble, did he make the catch? They're gonna mark it complete, Briscoe. Josh Briscoe, Lomdale, North Carolina. Came in today with 23 grabs, 191 yards. Short of the first down, that brings up fourth and four. And Colquitt. Will punt away, leads the SEC in punting, and last uh, season, Steve, an all-SEC pick. Kind of runs in the family, you know? There, there are a few Colquitts, I believe, that have, that have been able to drop the ball and hit it with their foot pretty good. <laughs> Angling to the corner. Turns it over, and the fair catch at the 14-yard line. Boy, Mikey Henderson has had very little opportunity. Tennessee leading 12th ranked Georgia 35 to 7 and other big performers around the NCAA today How about Michigan getting back on track behind Mike Hart to Steve 215 yards on 22 carries and three touchdowns CJ Boucher You ever thrown for 520? Ooh, not me. He did today against Michigan State and Matt Ryan from Boston College goes 312 yards and four touchdowns and BC knocks off Bowling Green with big numbers 55 24 Well, how about the job that Michigan has done? getting themselves back into credibility and you know they're, they're going to make a run for that Big Ten title before it's all said and done. Unfortunately the big victory over Notre Dame is what spurred their confidence to new levels. Georgia flags are down handoff Marino trying to slide down the line to find an opening at the 16. And here's Thomas Ritter will be against Tennessee. Offside, number 93, defense, lining up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Tuesday on the unit, the lives of thousands are in the hands of one. Dennis Haysbert stars in a new episode of the unit that's Tuesday after NCIS, right here on CBS. First and five. Marino picks up two to the 22. Well, I, I think that was a uh, case of Mark Rick just trying to catch the Tennessee defense, maybe playing in pass defense, trying to pop a little trap up inside. I'm surprised uh, they would they would attempt to do that because there's really not going to be a whole lot of whole lot of concern about picking up four or five yards in the running game at this point. Second down and three. 
As Stafford stands in the shotgun, good protection, throws a dart over the middle cock by the tight end, Trip Chandler. First and 10 at the 42-yard line, and the Bulldogs are in that hurry-up offense, down 35-7. And that was a laser from uh, Matthew Stafford right there to Trip Chandler, right on the money. Good anticipation, good timing. Offensive coordinator Mike Bobo, not too excited about being in this position, but he's going to let Matthew Stafford go a little bit here. A pick up a 20. Again, Chandler makes the grab at the 45, a pick up a 4. You now you talk about Mike Bobo, took the play calling away from Mark Rick. Rick said that was what he wanted, by the way, at the end of last season. Bobo now calling the plays, and that's enabled Rick basically to, as he told us, have more time with his players. He'll set up 15-minute windows uh, during the week where the guys can come in and talk football or talk life. Oh, great catch. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Boy, Did not that's... Kenneth Harris, number 88, out that's, of bounds. That's a shame. There was nobody within 10 yards of him. You know, Matthew Stafford coming out, he, he hasn't had many chances to make a lot of plays today. And I just think right there, you know, you, you got your man that open on the sideline. Give him a ball that, that he can catch and maybe turn up and pick up another five or six more yards. Should have been an easy throw and catch. Well, Stafford also, his first game here in Knoxville. Welcome to Tennessee, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Shotgun is Stafford. The sophomore from Dallas looking at third and six. Play clock to three, to two. Got it off with one to spare. Lumpkin, first carry since coming back from the thumb injury. Mitchell, the left end, made the stop on Lumpkin. Fresh legs from Mr. Lumpkin right there, doing a good job getting back in the groove. Nice cut up inside and picked up eight or nine yards there. Only three carries before the injury. Last year, the team leader in yards rushing nearly 800 for Craig Lumpkin as we head to the nine-minute mark. A little quick flip, hot slant, caught. And Wilson keeps the ball. Tony Wilson, red-shirt freshman from Daytona. Georgia, again, just hurrying it up, trying to find the end zone here with under nine minutes of play in the fourth quarter. First and ten, Georgia. First and ten. Lumpkin swings out of a tackle. High steps another. Oh, that's a beautiful run to the 29. Stopped once, twice, and pushes his way to the 29-yard line. A pickup of seven the hard way. Well, you know, that was almost like he knew exactly what was coming. You watch him here. He makes the cut. Does a super job of anticipating the moves that the defense was going to throw at him. One guy dives at his legs. A little easy high step right over the top of him. Looks like he's got his legs. And fresh and ready to play some more football. Marino replaces Lumpkin. This time the ball finds Sean Bailey. Goes outside and is met by one, two, three Tennessee balls. And took a hard pop around the 15, 16 yard line. Marsalis Johnson, number 31, got a lick on him. And that was just a jailbreak screen, we used to call that. Receiver coming straight down the line of scrimmage, trying to cut back inside the blocks of the pulling lineman on the outside, trying to kick everybody outside, creating a lane up in the middle, and good execution there. A little bit better job in the second half by Georgia as far as yards, but, you know, Tennessee's willing to give up those yards in the middle of the field to keep the clock running. Stafford flush out of the pocket. Throws to the end zone. They're going to say bobbled the ball. Boy. You had to wait. It was uh, nearly a miraculous catch by Harris. It should have been a catch by Harris. There's no reason for him to bobble that ball. Matthew Stafford did a great job laying it right over the top. Watch this. He, that ball does not get tipped. Well, it did get tipped a little bit. Left hand right there by Eric Berry. Just threw it off a little bit. That's why the ball was bobbled by Harris. Good touch throw by Matthew Stafford there, though. That brings up second down. Under eight to play from the eye. Movement up front. And now some late flags are tossed around the 15-yard line. It's not Velasco, number 75, clapping his hands. Looks to go against Tennessee. Offside, number 99 defense, five-yard penalty. Remain second down. 
Mapu. Offsides. The next Saturday, top card sharks take no prisoners and show no mercy at the Ultimate Blackjack Tour. Then the best pro skateboarders and BMX riders compete for a spot in the World Championships at the Action Sports World Tour. Back on the ground, up the middle to the five-yard line. Marino. Well, when he's had the ball, Steve, impressive. Redshirt freshman, Belford, New Jersey. Came in with a 5.5 per yard carry average. And he's a physical back at 5'11. Well, it's a shame for the for the Georgia fans and for the Georgia team that they were not able to get him on track. They fell behind so quickly. But this guy is an exciting player to watch. He plays with fire. You see him on film, and he is he is talking. He's running around just trying to fire everybody up all the time. I love his energy and the way he runs the football. Marino is the lone back. He'll take the handoff right up the gut for the pads are still popping here in Knoxville. And Marino down to the three yard line and hit by Rico McCoy. You know, Steve, I don't think the SEC is going to be decided until until late in the season. I mean, this was a really, let's be honest, a must win for Tennessee. Oh, no doubt about it. Really a must win for both if we really get down to it. If Georgia was sitting in the catbird seat, if they would have found a way to, to win this game. But Tennessee now, they've got a chance to get right back into it with the losses. Up top. Intercepted, but a flag is dropped. I bet you that's going to be offensive pass interference. I'm with you. Marsalis Johnson, great control, had position, and takes that ball away from Massaqua. Yeah, Ma Massaqua, I think, was just trying to play defense and keep that ball from being intercepted. Uh, Thomas Ritter and his crew will huddle. Well, let's go back and look at exactly what happened. Stafford can't fault him, just trying to make a play, just trying to give Massaquai a chance to catch that ball. But Massaquai, he knew the ball was a little bit underthrown, trying to get get it back and keep it from being intercepted. Didn't quite do a good enough job. It's got to, if anything, it's got to go against Georgia. I don't know if we can see that again, but you just that uh, that looked to be possibly defensive interference. Pass interference, number 31 yes. on the defense. Ball the will defense. be placed at it the was... two-yard line. Automatic first down. Did you see it there? Was was there. The that, he we pushes off with the ball in the air. And he is pushing away. I, I don't agree with that. And then gets that. position. I don't agree with that at all. I, I, I see there was contact, but pushing away, no way. He was just feeling where that offensive player was, and the contact came over the top from the offensive player. Well, Georgia will take the call, and they try to pound it in for six. And Marino says hello to Gerard Mayo. Clock under seven to play, second and goal. I don't know, Steve. There was a lot of contact. There was, but it, but it was, if you look at there was no pushing off. It was two guys just kind of hanging on each other trying to get position. And in college, in, in college, remember, they're much more liberal with the contact that a, a receiver and a defensive back can have with each other than the NFL. Keeper, they throw. Touchdown, Georgia. Trip Chandler. And the crowd with a chorus of boos after the call goes against Tennessee, Georgia. Finds the end zone, Stafford to Trip Chandler. And Stafford took a shot there from Xavier Mitchell. Right as he let go of that ball, but still delivered a strike to a wide open Chandler in the back of the end zone. Cut two with the extra point. 86 of 86 PATs during his career. Stafford did a nice job selling, hit that ball down and found the tight end. Trip Chandler, first touchdown catch of the season. 35-14, Tennessee. Tennessee owns a 35-14 lead over 12th ranked Georgia with 6.05 to play here in Knoxville. That last touchdown, 13 plays, 86 yards and four minutes and 50 seconds off the clock. As Chandler brings down his first touchdown catch of the season. 
And Steve Mark Rick looks like he's going to fall to 23 and 4 his road record and he still remains king of the road in the SEC around college football in fact. Yeah 23 and 4 not not too shabby still today just wasn't his day from the get go. Andy Bailey is going to handle the kicking duties and I'm thinking this could be the onsides. I think it's got to be if you want to have any any sign of life. Lines it up at the 30. Tennessee with the all hands team on the on the field. Got to travel 10 little chip shot bounces inside the 40 and a sliding catch and a grab at the 32 yard line. And Steve let's uh, go back and revisit above the line. Well let's look at it. Tennessee offense run to win. That's a check right there. They did a great job. Georgia defense freeze Foster. They did not freeze Foster or any part of that Georgia or the Tennessee offense. Georgia offensively less runs than passes very unusual for them. They were not able to do that balanced offense we were talking about Tennessee defense. They stirred the pot all day long by controlling the Georgia offense all day. They were able to get this crowd keep them into it and really take all hope all air out of this Georgia Bulldogs team. 35 14 Tennessee over Georgia. Under center goes Ainge. Right now, Philip Former and Tennessee wants to run clock as hard as he runs hard off the left side to the 39 yard line. Now, what's coming up now for Tennessee will be a road game at Mississippi State, while Georgia will also have to jump on the road once again and play next week at Vanderbilt. And I'm really impressed with this stable of running backs that Tennessee has unleashed today with Foster, Hardest D. Coker, and a little bit of career, even the, the, the redshirt freshman. They've all come in and done a great job running the football. Play clock to eight. As Ainge again takes a glance at the sideline, will split the backfield, second and three. Hardesty. To so about the 44 yard line, as you look at Tennessee, this is what's left at Mississippi State. Saban and the Crimson Tide await on the 20th of October and then South Carolina at home. That's a that's a that's a tough month of October. Then Louisiana Lafayette, Arkansas, Vandy, and you finish at Kentucky. And that, that Kentucky South Carolina game obviously helped the Tennessee Volunteers and really get some get some believing that if they just take care of their own business, they might have a chance to take this. I like I like what the Tennessee offense is doing here too. They're lining up. Making Georgia show what they're going to do on defense, and then they make Ainge, the change. Ainge is looking over the sideline. The coaches are putting them in what they think is a desirable play. Hardesty thrown for a loss, and you got an injured Vol coming up slow. Yeah, that looks like Vladimir Richard, left guard. You see, they're doing they're doing this uh, no huddle offense where they're keeping Georgia and the same personnel on the field. Getting them to line up and show their hand. There's still 18 seconds on the play clock. I I can't imagine the ball being snapped early here. But there you go. See, they're gonna they're gonna let the clock run down. Look over and find a good play to run. Great job, great job by the coaching staff of Tennessee. Really, really smart. Ainge takes the snap with one on the game clock or on the play clock, and it's batted down to the line of scrimmage, incomplete. And time permitting, Tim and Spencer will wrap up the day on TIAA Cref College Football Today. Of course, later tonight, another big game on CBS. LSU, Florida. Well, you see the coaching staff. Now, if you can read that, Steve, you've been in the <laughs> Notre Dame, the pros for 17. All those signals mean something. Yeah. Ainge and dumps out one and the flats incomplete. Ainge. Intended receiver was Hardesty. And it, let's compare tonight, uh, Steve, with what LSU and Florida will put on the field. You got Tebow, Paralu, and Flynn, and Tebow 
Yeah, you know, Tebow. He, he can throw, and you know what? We watched him a lot. He can, he, he's a tough runner as well. Oh, he's a tremendously tough runner, and I, I think it's going to be a great game tonight. Paraloo and Flynn obviously splitting duties for LSU. They've got a great combination going. Tebow, though, I'm, I'm really concerned about the beating that he takes. If they try to run him tonight up the gut like they've been doing so often against LSU, LSU will have him for lunch. They'll be, they'll be trying to rip his head off. Mikey Henderson at the five, quick as a whip. Trying to find a seam, and it closed down at the 10-yard line. 52-yard punt and a 7-yard return. 3.34 to play in Knoxville. Storylines around the sport of college football. South Florida, one of the big, big stories. Top 10 shakeup. More's coming. How good is the Pac-10? USC. And how about can LSU, Steve Berline, run the table? We're going to find out a little bit more tonight with Florida and LSU. You look at the top 10, LSU, USC. This is the AP top 10. Cal is there. Look how loaded that uh, Pac-10 is. Ohio State, Wisconsin. I think one team, too, which is a great story in college football, June Jones in Hawaii as Georgia goes up for the deep ball and it's taken down at the 45-yard line. First turnover, and look at the emotions as Phil Fulmer just got the Gatorade bucket. <laughs> I'll tell you, his players love him. I couldn't imagine a better coach to play for than Philip Fulmer. We'll watch the replay. We'll see you. You know, hey, Matthew Stafford, don't feel bad about this. You're trying to make a play, just trying to trying to find something positive to happen. Give your team a chance to go out of here with your head up. Well, let's check out now for the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. We take you back second quarter, and it's the flea flicker, and it's a beauty. Taylor with the pass out to Coker, wide open, 56 yards, and Steve Berline, that made the score 14-0 early in, in quarter number two. And really, if there was a play that really set the course for this game, it was that play. Lucas Taylor right there, the former high school quarterback, who, by the way, we got to get this in for the kid, ran in a, in a game in high school ran for 539 yards and there you're going to see again tonight on cbs the florida lsu game he ran for 539 scored six touchdowns but his high school team lost his team lost yes they scored 42 points he had every touchdown and mr thomas ritter trying to tell us something there Looks like they're going to review possibly that interception. Well, Ben Oldham is the replay official. And Thomas Ritter comes to the sideline to sport the headset. But let, let's talk about that, though. That Lucas Taylor, though, 539 yards rushing in one game, six touchdowns. It's almost like he couldn't have had any teammates on the field. I mean, how do you run for 539 yards? Well, the final score, by the way, 56 to 42. And here's uh, what they're looking at upstairs. That ball hangs. And was there possession? The ball comes out, and they want to take a look. That's yeah. a tough angle to see. Uh, he's got it. Feet are down. Boom. I, I think, yeah, that's ball a catch. Ball pops out. That's a catch. That after, ball was stripped on the after, ground. after both feet were on the ground, then his rear end hit the ground and then it was kind of stripped out of there I think it has to go it's got to be remember it's got to be irrefutable it's got to be very clear that it was the opposite of what was called before they can overturn it I just don't see them having enough info to overturn that after review the ruling on the field is confirmed it was an interception first half and <laughs> he will not argue and Gets a bear hug along the sideline. Picks up his first pick of the season. And so Tennessee will take over at the 45-yard line with 3.26 to play. And looks like more Gatorade coming. Uh-oh. I have a feeling Steve Knoxville is going to be pretty active tonight. <laughs> After uh, all the radio talk and newspaper articles about the demise of Tennessee and Philip Fulmer in this game, puts Tennessee right back in the thick of things right in the SEC in the, East. Right smack in the middle of it. New quarterback is Jonathan Crofton, the sophomore, takes over for Eric Ainge. 
And let's go back to New York, and here's Tim Brando. Tim? All right, Craig, you know, Alabama's had a propensity for not finishing games, at least until this year. Case Keenum's, though, last ditch pass for Houston, intercepted by City and Castile. The Crimson Tide led 23 to nothing after one quarter. They hold on to win by six. Craig. Well, Tim, Bama and Nick Saban bounce back after last week's loss. Well, Nick Saban has a magic wand. Wherever he goes, at least in college football, yeah, he, good things happen. <laughs> Not a lot of good things in the years in Miami. Got a loss of a yard back to around the 47 yard line and our Ruby Tuesday player of the game is Arian Foster the junior from San Diego 17 carries 98 yards and like a year ago against uh, Georgia scores once again three touchdowns that's six touchdowns in two ball games against the Bulldogs uh, he, he ran the ball with authority all day long very confident very strong that first touchdown run where he spun off a tackle and kept his balance into the end zone just a tremendous effort on his part he really really ran the ball well and again give credit to the boys up front but he sure made it look easy today third down at eight under two minutes a little misdirection is Hancock trying to cut through the seam on the far side and Works his way to the 47-yard line. Let's talk about Arian Foster. And here's that first touchdown. You see that little nifty little spin move, and then right there trying to sell everybody over the top, and he bounces it outside, cruises into the end zone, and then the final touchdown for him, really driving the spike in that coffin. Arian Foster's got a lot of reasons to be happy right now. He and his, his teammates, they've been looking forward to a, a, this feeling for a while. They had the off week. It came at a good time, I really think, for them because they were really in a bad place. Uh, even though they'd come off the Arkansas State win, they had lost badly to Florida, and of course lost to a very good Cal team the opening week of the season. But boy, it gotta feel good to them to win a big game like this. There's a timeout called by Tennessee. 108 to play in Knoxville. Well, on fourth down at two, Tennessee will punt. Cole quit. Back on the field, and Mikey Henderson awaits at the 10-yard line. Well, what a leg. And drops it out of bounds about five yards. Deep into the end zone, but just a little bit wide right. They're going to say now out of bounds Bounce at the 11. And yeah, we talked about Tennessee, what's left. Here's what's left for Georgia next week at Vandy. And then comes... Urban Meyer and the Florida Gators. We'll wait and see what happens tonight against LSU. Then comes Troy, Auburn, and Tommy Tuberville. Kentucky, one of the surprise teams in the SEC. And then you finish on the road at Georgia Tech. Yeah, it's, it's, gotta, it's gonna be an uphill road for them, to say the least. But you, know, you, you can't discount them. You know, two losses will not eliminate them from the chance, but it sure is gonna make it tough. Joe Cox is in for Matthew Stafford, and incomplete is the call. As Moore dropped that ball, Michael Moore. Well, SEC East standings, and this is with Tennessee winning. It's South Carolina three and one, Florida two and one. Georgia drops to two and two. Tennessee will pick up their first SEC conference win, Steve. And Kentucky's right there, and Vandy, with along with Georgia, the two teams with two losses in, in the East. It, it, it's going to go right down to that final week like we were talking about, Craig. There's going to be a lot of teams shifting back and forth, up and down in those standings as the, year, as the week goes along. Cox the handoff to Lumpkin. Lumpkin, Gary. And pushes his way to the 12-yard line. Make up the 17. McCoy. And the clock ticks with 42 seconds to play. Well, you could almost sense, too, that Tennessee, they were kind of tired of all the talk about tennis, uh, Georgia coming in and winning the last three games here in Knoxville. They had that chip on their shoulder as well. And Phil Fulmer, he's used to winning at this house right here. And I know the people, the volunteer fans, this is a little bit more what they normally would expect from their home team. Lumpkin taken down to the 21-yard line. This win today, by the way, will be 140 career wins for Philip Fulmer, and he continues to move up the all-time chart among SEC coaches. 
And what's amazing as well, Georgia's three-game win streak in Knoxville ends today. Exactly. Well, for Steve Burline, Craig Bullerjack, we say so long from Knoxville with a final score, Tennessee 35 and 12th-ranked Georgia 14. Tonight at 8 o'clock at the Clash.